Got another round of donations coming to you hot off the press. $15 from N-0, who says, so excited for Limit Break to be back. Good luck to all the runners. $25 from Lurby Master, no relation to Kirby Master, who says, hold the line. Donation to runner's choice. Also cat. $75 from Kejik, who says, yeet the council. Sadly, that did not come to pass. We have $55 in anonymous donations. We have $10 from Radish, $11 from Sakul, $100 from Jason LaRose, who says, I don't have any donations to read, are the saddest words a host can say. Let me help fix that. Incentive goes to host's choice. Thank you very much. And Stijans with $100, who has much the same sentiment. No donations to read? This is unacceptable. We have $25 from Zach, who says, we love RPGs, wahoo! $5 from Phantasms, who says, RPG Limit Break is back, and I'm so happy for it. So, listen. During 2019, Puexel mentioned our grand total across all marathons was about $600,000. Let's get a hype trip going. I think it would be reasonable to say that getting our overall total to one million is definitely possible. So I'm starting the $5 donation train it's to really break the record this week. It feels so good to be back to watching my favorite week-long event of the entire year. Unfortunately, this will be my only donation for the year. I want to make a shout out to a special person I consider my brother. This guy has legit been one of the biggest reasons my mental health has been kept in check. Archer, I will be showing this to you later, but I just wanted to let you know I appreciate you for putting up with me these past few years, and thanks for keeping my spirits up in rough times. I love you, buddy. Mental health in these times is so much more crucial to take care of now than ever. Keep fighting the good fight to those who are struggling, and reach out when you need help. It will do more than you could ever imagine, even if you feel it won't. Take care, RPG Limit Break, and welcome back. Let's go! And with that, it looks like we are ready to go. Andy Perfect and Creative Eli will now bring you Dragon Quest XI, Echoes of an Elusive Age. Howdy, everyone. All right. We good? So my name is Andy Perfect. My name is Creative Eli. And I'm Purple Mario 920 so we're going to be bringing you uh, Dragon Quest XI Any Percent. This just does the first two acts of the game, uh, allowing glitches. And I think we as runners are ready whenever we're ready. Oh, we're going to need the... Uh, oh, yeah, we need the, the names and the language. Yeah. All, All right. right, let me get those real quick. We'll do non-timing rules. Concur. <laughs> I don't want to speed type these. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get it right. So... By a margin of 37 to 10, this run will use the Japanese voice track. Nice. 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 All right. Perfect. And the hero's name, with a winning total of $91, is Wei Wuxian. That is spelled W-E-Y. Okay. Capital W. U-X-I-A-N. Nice. All right, cool. We'll probably go ahead and start the timer once uh, Andy hits yes here. So, ready for the countdown? Yeah, now, do I use the Japanese language in these first menus? Yep. Okay. Uh, there will be an option for the Japanese language. Yep. Okay. All right, cool. Five, four, three, two, one, go. All right, good nice. luck. There it is. Yep. Nice. 
So hey, everybody, welcome to Dragon Quest XI. Uh, this is going to be the definitive edition that was uh, released for the PC. Uh, initially, this was released on the Switch. Um, I believe it's a year or two later that the, this version came out. Um, now, this game, hard to believe, it's almost five years old, uh, came out around 2017 in Japan. Um, it, and it definitely has gone through an evolution. <laughs> uh, I'd say so. It started initially at the PS4 level, jumped to PC. Um, eventually came to the Switch as a Definitive Edition, and now we have it on PC as the Definitive Edition. So we could pretty much play this, this game like pretty much every console. And the interesting thing is the speedrun has changed dramatically from every single new release. The, uh, with the introduction of the Switch version, the Definitive Edition originally came out on Switch. And um, it first allowed for cutscene skipping, which is a, a very welcome site in, in Dragon Quest XI, because without cutscene skips, it adds on several more hours onto the game. And then with the PC version, it has all the same features and everything, but there's an exclusive glitch to the PC version, which shaves off another couple hours. So the, um, the Definitive Edition PC version is about, I don't know, six-ish hours faster than the original PC version. It's kind of a dreamer's... <laughs> the way this game has developed become it's kind of like what we have dreamed of because with the PC version initially it was just it had the, the glitch which cut two hours and as Andy was talking about now we can skip cutscenes and we have the <laughs> quality of life features to add on top of those uh, top of the glitch uh, just really made the speed run super fast so this category has been initially started 12 hours and now it's just right under five hours yeah Top tier runners are pushing it close to the four hour mark. Yeah. So Andy right here is fighting some smogs. This is pretty much an RNG fight. Uh, we're hoping that hero lands hits. Uh, it's about a 50% chance. It looks like he's getting two first two hits here. Yeah, the fight's relatively safe. I mean, it's there are there's a very slim chance you can die, but it's more or less scripted to make you not die because your Gemma who's coming with you heals you whenever you're low on HP. But if you get hit pretty hard consecutively, you can wipe. This looked like a pretty good fight, and I think it was only one miss. So. Yeah. The story starts off with Hero. Um, he's doing a sort of passage of right. Um, he's doing a test to become a luminary. So what he has to do is he has to climb up this mountain um, in order to get his, uh, his luminary powers, or call it p passage. Um, so this is uh, how the game starts. Have I got time for a donation or two? Yeah, Absolutely. Go for it. All right, we have $11 from Leonia19, who says, best of luck from someone who worked on the localization QA for the Switch version of Dragon Quest XI S. Nice. We awesome. also have $100 from Matthias, who says, Dragon Quest XI reignited my fire for the series. And after that, I finally played through the last games in the series. Good luck and greetings from okay. Germany. Yeah, this game is pretty much like a, a very good example of fan service. It takes all these wonderful things that we like to remember about all the other games in the series and kind of throws them all into this game. And um, yeah, I, I knew the first time that I played the game that it was going to be a very popular speed run. And once they started incorporating things like cutscene skips and sprinting, um, <laughs> because uh, I do remember the speed run before sprinting was an option. Um, once they did all that quality of life, it, it turned into a great speed game. Oh, yeah. Just imagine doing the whole speed run, just hero walking throughout the whole podcast. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> the steps in um, that uh, phenomenon yeah. alone, oh. alone, the steps in that was, was incredibly painful. That's a marathon right there. It, yeah. it was totally a marathon of steps. <laughs> 
here you can see that we have a mode of transportation, the horse. We always want to be on the horse as much as possible because this is the fastest way to get around through the maps. Um, another feature that they added is we are able to call the horse at any time uh, once we get past through a, a certain uh, story point. Nice. But, uh, I'm getting here, that one experience this time. There you go. <laughs> Uh, Andy's going to purposely run into a couple enemies just to get one or two or three uh, experience points because uh, there's a grind later and sometimes when you finish the grind hero is just a tiny bit short and this can help push him to that level 8 that we need. I didn't think it was necessary until today when I was literally one experience short from what I needed. <laughs> oh no, now I killed like <laughs> five of them. <laughs> <laughs> no chances. And he picked up a seed of life. Uh, what you're going to notice is that the first couple hours of this game, uh, hero is going to be incredibly underleveled. So we want to give as much help as we can to the hero, and that includes uh, stacking seeds on him, seeds of life, seeds of strength, seeds of defense. Yeah, they make a big impact in the early game. Later, late game, they're not as impactful. But when you're a certain stat is only ten, and you tack on another three, it's a huge boost in the early game. And it's a pretty big staple in the Dragon Quest uh, 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 series in general, is getting seeds and knowing how to use them. Um, it really helps. It can help throughout the entire game um, just to add stats to your characters. You'll see that a lot in Dragon Quest, the Dragon Quest you run later in the week. One of my favorite places in this game is Heliodor. Pretty, very pretty looking. Um, when you just play this game in general, a lot of the environments, the, the world, the details, it's just a very beautiful game to you find some, in look some, at. In some RPGs, you find kind of the town's a little lifeless, but this, de this town definitely feels alive. Yeah. They did a good job with it. Right now, Hero's on the way to inform the king that he is the Luminary. So he's going to meet up with the king of Heliodor here. The king. Yeah, the king. <laughs> and hero ends up in prison. Obligatory. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> the JRPG prison sequence. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much the king found the luminary a threat and they want to lock him out forever. But he meets Eric here who has an escape plan. Um, he met with the seer who pretty much guided and instructed him to find the luminary. If I may sneak in a donation or two. Yeah, go for it. We have $5 from Battlehawk, who says, I can't believe how long it's been since RPG Limit Break. So excited for another week of great runs in community, especially for such a great cause as Nami. We have a $50 anonymous donation, and then we have $100 from Slick Fingers, donating for a friend who lost their battle to mental illness. Much love for Nami and all the runners. We have $25 from Myth Marvel, and then $50 from Jet Boy the Mage, who says, subs over dubs. I have a feeling that's where the incentive slash bid war came from. Right now, Andy's doing a little bit of a Metal Gear Solid sequence, trying to <laughs> get past the uh, guards. And nice job getting past all of them. Oh, yeah. That's... It's easy to fall into like a bad muscle memory and get caught by some of those guards. Yeah. Speaking from personal experience. Interesting fact is you can actually, if you do a bunch of grinding before this, before getting to the sequence, you can, you can fight this dragon right here and beat him, and you get a little mini cutscene that is exclusive to that situation, where Eric just talks about how he's impressed that you were able to do that. Such saying is if you're willing to grind for like 20, 30 hours Seriously. to get that extra line of dialogue, saying hero or Eric's <laughs> impressive or impressed with hero, yeah. Wow. But it's interesting that de that detail. I'm actually curious if anyone in Twitch chat has actually done that, because I know I know like a lot of Dragon Quest uh, people who watch Dragon Quest games love grinding. You know? it's, e it's easy to make those kind of grindy challenges for yourself. Yeah. 
I just watch a YouTube video about it. Nice. And call, it, and call it good. Yeah. <laughs> Same. The enemies on the screen you can actually encounter, like, but you see all those metal slimes around. You can actually run into the metal slimes, but uh, the dragon is, are, is paired with the enemies, so literally impossible to kill any of the enemies that you encounter here. Interesting thing about this game, so you'll see, you notice that I just skipped uh, a, a chance to save my game. Um, this game is very, very friendly when it comes to auto saves, and in most, in pretty much every case, I'm not aware of any that where this, where it's the opposite is true. It's slower to save your game to set a set of safety or anything. It's pretty much always faster to just let the game auto save as it will, and if you do take a death somewhere, just take the auto save. And yeah, you can even force your autosaves by zooming or going in and out of a, an area. So oh, does, does zooming set your autosave? Yep. If oh, you I zoom to that. a camp, yep. Also, when you use the autosave, you don't lose half your gold. That's true. Yeah, which is a, a token DQ thing. <laughs> it punishes you after you get punished. And the gold routing in this game is pretty tight for a good chunk of it, so losing half is detrimental. Extremely detrimental in many cases. Yeah. So yeah, we got thrown out of Helidor because the king doesn't like us. Now we're coming in the back way that Eric knows about. And um, talking to one of Eric's friends. Here Andy's going to do some basic shopping. He's pretty much going to give himself some herbs, a couple holy water. Uh, one of the holy water is used to get past the guard here. He also rammed into a tree to get uh, one of the berries. Uh, the fastest way to get past that guard is to uh, pretty much get uh, the holy water and the berry to the dog, and uh, that'll, that'll scare away the guard. I didn't realize until recently that there's several different ways to clear the route out. Yep, you can, one way is you can just straight up bribe him with a lot of money, um, but we don't really have that much. Uh, it's, it's a crazy lot of money. And then the other one is you can write a love letter, I believe. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know any of that. <laughs> yeah, there's, <laughs> there's a couple methods to this. Yeah. I knew about the, uh, there's a, they stash a holy water somewhere else in this town if you're doing the no shopping hard mode. Oh, yeah. So that you can still do that way of getting in. It's like on one of the ledges up above town. Yeah, that's pretty useful, yeah. Um, this game has a difficulty option where we call it, they call it draconian, and it's a bunch of, op bunch of options such as hard mode, no shopping, um, no fleeing, shy pox, well, when people have done that challenge, everybody knows what that shy box is. It's one of the worst <laughs> things in the world. Yeah, shy box is just your characters will randomly lose turns in battle. Yep. Yeah, and if you're looking for a challenge run, there's I've been seeing a lot of Japanese or a couple Japanese runners do um, full draconian um, challenges lately, um, and the routing of it is very interesting. So I would definitely try to check that out if you're interested in that. So because the money route, pretty much in the case with every RPG, you're always short on money, trying to find out any way to get extra money in the early game. So we're coming here to get a piece of equipment, stealing a pair of fishnet stockings from that little old lady. And it actually sells for quite a bit for this, this early in the game. Oh yeah, it sells for like $400. That's, that's, that's quite a bit. Yeah, one of my favorite things about Dragon Quest XI is how they like interact with you as you're stealing from them. <laughs> yeah. like, that, like every time I see, hey, that's private, I, I just laugh. Short on money, we may be, but would some donations help? Absolutely. All right. Well, first off, we have $100 from Zombie Train, and then we have $25 from High Spirits, who says, Good luck on the run, Ellie and Andy. I wish I could be there to join you, but life likes to give us challenges, and I must slay my own Baramos first. Hi there, Mario. We also have $25 from Keanu Lookalike, who says... Hello, Limit Break family. So glad to see the event back in full swing and off to an amazing start. Shoutouts to Ellie, Andy, and PM for being able to showcase DQ11 in all its glory. Sad I wasn't able to be there in person for this, but just know I'm cheering you all on from home. Also, don't forget, you spin me right round, baby, right round, like a record, baby, <laughs> right round, round, round. That was commitment to that right there. Yeah. yeah. Good. Ah. Sometimes you'll see... Uh, either me or Ellie, just as soon as we load a new area, you'll see us like run off in a random direction. And it's because sometimes the game doesn't like giving you like full control of the joystick when you load certain areas. I don't understand why or when it happens. But if you ever see me running off in just a random direction when a new area loads, it's because internally I'm getting mad. 
<laughs> as the game pushes me away from where I want to go. Yeah, you mentioned that earlier today, and I never noticed it. <laughs> and then right after the um, the scene started in the Abbey, I noticed you running to the right, and I was like, oh, it just <laughs> happened. Yeah, we don't know why it does that. Yeah. No matter if, what, if you use a different controller, different hard drive, we just don't know why it does yeah. that. Something with the engine, I'm guessing. Uh, thanks for your donations, guys. Um, it's great to hear from the DQ community. We definitely miss High Spirits here. High Spirits was supposed to be running with us today, but um, as you mentioned, life throws challenges at you sometimes. Definitely. With us in spirit. Um, Keanu as well, he speeds around this game, one of the top runners of this game. Um, definitely has contributed a lot to the development of the different uh, routes and such. Speaking of community members, we have $100 from Gramera, who says, Woohoo, DQ! <laughs> Normally, I'd be requesting an all goof off run. We all know the goof off is the best class of the series. <laughs> In absence of goof offs, let's get that stinking gift. <laughs> Thanks, Gramora. Thank you, Gramora. When you see those small, those like cloud enemies swirling about, it means they're about to teleport to somewhere new. And oftentimes it'll be right on top of you if you're trying to gamble and run to the side. So right here is uh, Andy's going to utilize something called the Forge, where we can with we pick up a recipe, we can forge the item as long as we have the materials. And the very nice thing that they added in the Definitive Edition is that the items... Ooh. Ooh, nice. This might be perfect here. Oh, and I was really low on that yeah. one. It'll be plus two. Good job. At least it's plus two. It's yeah. Um, the nice thing they added is you can actually purchase the material that you need straightly from the forge without having to visit the shop. And we use that quite a bit in the speedrun. It's very useful. Uh, you can get a plus one, plus two, or plus three. If you get a plus three, it's a time loss because they play a huge fanfare. Like, basically, if you've won, won a casino in the Dragon Quest uh, <laughs> series, you know what the fanfare is. Jackpot. Yeah. yeah. For the first hour or so, Eric is going to be our main damage dealer. Uh, Andy's teaching him Flame Slash over here, uh, giving him a Seed of Strength. Then we'll want to boost Hero's life with the Seed of Life. He's going to be using Flame Slash, a decent damage dealer here in the beginning. I'm um, sorry, you're going to be, Andy's going to be utilizing Eric for these next fights. Yeah, Eric will be the main damage dealer at the beginning of the game and the very end of the game. And nothing in between. So we have our first mini boss coming up. I don't know if you could truly call it a real boss, but uh, you got the tricky devil who is uh, harassing this old man who lives here. And we're gonna take care of him so the old man who has been turned into a dog can live in peace. And the trick to this battle is you basically want it to be over before tricky devil casts heal. It's a scripted battle. If he's below 50% of his HP, then he'll cast heal in a certain round. Yeah. Uh, Hero's just right about the threshold. Yep. Yeah, gets a high damage roll. He, he can die, so that's why he herbs here. So it's Sizz, followed up with four physical attacks, and he'll do another Sizz. And because we know what he's doing, like Purple explained, uh, we can use the herbs appropriately. We understand uh, the damage roll that each attack in the Sizz does. So far, uh, the damage rolls are looking good. This should be in good shape to finish him right before yeah. the uh, Would the Frizz have killed him right there? Because his flame slash will. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I was there, a little worried about the frizzing and then not killing him. Good fight. Good fight. Skip yeah. the heal. Yeah. We've got more donations coming in. How much time have I got here? Yep. Yeah, yeah go for donation. it. Yeah, go for it. All right. We have $50 from some Diener who says, So happy to be back at RPG Limit Break this year. Best of luck to my friends Andy Perfect and Creative Ellie on Dragon Quest XI. Show me the metal slimes. <laughs> 
$10, 10 cents from third policeman who says, Andy, you're like a brother to me. Good luck and go Astros. Oh, I bet that guy's happy. <laughs> He's like a brother because he is my brother. Oh. <laughs> That's Hi, Daniel. $25 from Shadow Killer, who says, Good luck to Ellie and Andy on the run, and a big shout to PM on the commentary. One day, we'll get all the DQ boys together in one spot. Smile. Heck yeah. $15 from Lyriel the Witch, who says, Donating to hopefully get Meowth, named after excellent watermelon cat streamer Melanie Pepin. Good luck to the runner on one of my favorite games. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon is up next, if I believe. So look forward to that later today. A little interesting part of the story right here. Hero comes back to his hometown and everything seems normal. Like he just made it back after finding out that the king hates him and he's really confused and he gets back here and finds out he's like 10 years in the past. And his mom doesn't recognize him. It reminds me a bit of a Dicky 5 when Hero goes back in time to meet his younger self. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of references throughout the the whole game to every every Dragon Quest game in here. Oh yeah. You'll hear it in the music, you'll hear it in the you'll see it in the stories, you'll see it you'll see it everywhere. It's just this is a great game. I always describe Dragon Quest 11 to other people who are like never played it as you take all the elements, like all the good elements of other RPGs. Dragon Quest XI didn't do anything new. It just took all the existing ones and did them near perfectly. Yeah. Good way, definitely good way to describe that. And it's beautiful. Like, the game just looks beautiful. So we do find out that Jasper uh, did raid the village. Barely any people in it. Um... And we talked to, um, is it, I guess it's a, just like a member of the village who kind of took us under his wing when we appeared. Yeah, and we, uh, he tells us where to go to um, find out more, I guess. His name is Chalky? Is that what his name is? I think so. It starts with a C. But he guides Hero to go and look at the, so Andy's heading to the tombstone and where he guides him. The deeper and deeper you get into speedrunning games, the more and more you forget why on earth you're doing certain things. Right. <laughs> what this guy's name is, why he wants you to do this. You're so far removed from playing it casually. So one thing you're gonna see in this next area um, that they added to this Dragon Quest is if you go to this like little campsite area, there's like a safe place. And the beautiful thing about that is um, uh, Chimera Wings in this have the option to return to the last place where you save. So right now, um, you're going to make it, uh, and he's going to make a save one here of the, so that he can like quickly come back here after the next boss. Yeah, one of the few times we're actually saving, not for the safety or anything, we're saving solely so we can warp out of this dungeon really quickly, like Purple described. Like yeah, we, only, we only do a save like that one other time in the run. Yeah. Pretty soon here. The way that Chimera Wings work in this game is it's pretty different from the old ways. You can either use it to visit the last major city that you visited, or you can do it uh, to the last place that you saved. Um, this is purple what Annie was describing here. All right, so in this run, we only do a couple grinds. I guess three grinds in the run. And uh, this is one of them. Two of them are very short, one's a little lengthier. But this one, we're, only gonna, we're intentionally going to take a few fights to get Eric to the next to a higher level so that he can learn a, a skill to boost his attack power. And also to make a side benefit is making this boss fight way, way safer. It also has an added benefit of in the next dungeon, Hero will learn a new skill, which makes that boss fight faster. In the end, it probably makes it faster overall. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta take your time to go faster. That was a really fast That's pep. That was a pretty early Really pep. early. Unfortunately, I probably won't have it for the Griffins, but maybe a pep again. Yes, sir. 
nice quality of life thing that they added in these recent Dragon Quest games is that when you level up, uh, your HP and MP gets restored, and it's actually very useful in like a scenario like this where uh, we want to be full HP, full MP before we fight the boss. Yeah, and I know that Hero and Eric will both get another level, so I can oh, fully nice. heal without worrying about MP or anything, because those will get restored by the time we fight the boss. So unfortunately, these are all small fights, so I'll have to take one more fight than I normally do. And for Very those quick, who though. haven't played Dragon Quest um, Eleven, uh, the reason why they're going blue that something called the Pep. They have a system called the Pep system, um, where over time the characters build up something called Pep. And right now, both characters are are fully pepped. Uh, it gives each character unique uh, stat bonuses. It also allows characters to do special team moves. Um, so it's, the pep system is definitely something we're going to be taking advantage of here in, in this run. It would be nice to keep those peps for the Griffin fight, but I'm not going to be able to, probably. Unfortunately. Yeah, if you want to know when they're going to go away, basically, you can look at it um, on the screen, and the characters will start flashing um, um, over by their, like, their name and everything. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to take this one fight down here. All very small fights. I don't know if I've ever seen all of these be just two. So Eric will probably level up here, and then Hero will level up on the next fight. Oh, oh, Hero leveled up. No, Eric will level up on the next one. Sorry. I wonder if one egg will be enough to... Uh... One egg by itself. I don't know. Push Eric to level seven. That'd be kind of nice. Two enemies should be enough for them. We take off Shona Mercy because I don't want Hero to use MP here. Cool. I don't think Eric took or Hero took any hits, so I'm all fully healed right now. Yeah, nice. Here, Andy's about to fight one of the harder fights in the beginning of the run. Um, one of the worst moves that the Griffins can do is something called Whoosh, powerful. Uh, double target attack um ideally we just want him want them to physical attack or even de-accelerate like they did so we, we just care about no damage you see uh andy focusing on one griffin with flame slash almost doing 30 damage uh, because he's level seven he added the attack bonus to him uh, i gotta heal to be safe in case i see a whoosh right now Oh, that would have left me at one. Still a good call, yeah. Eh, I think a Frizz will kill this guy. Nice. nice. We'd really like to see Hero get pepped now. If Hero gets pepped, I might actually save it for the jar... the... Jarvis fight. Oh, okay. Nice. But I don't get nice. to make that choice yeah. yet. <laughs> there you go. Very nice. <laughs> One of the best parts about all the skipping cutscenes is the very emotional monsters and characters. Just get like their first like half a second of dialogue. And they're always so dramatic. A lot of it's just screaming. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Got a couple more donations coming in if I have the time. Great. All right. We have $5 from Steven, $6 from Sakul, $12 from Dark, and $5 from Spacey, who says, Go, Melanie, go. Oh, that's a convenient segue. Speaking of incentives, Silvando's stinking gift does need a bit more financial backing. We're at $175 out of 500 needed. 
So get those donations in to get that stinking gift. As for the world's best puff puff, we are over halfway there with $640 out of 1,000. Helps that we just got 100 from Code and Data, who says, So excited to see Limit Break again and to see Dragon Quest XI. Also happy to be supporting NAMI, a great organization that has provided some critical support for my family through some tough times over the last several years. If you can, I hope you'll support them too. So, as part of the part of the story, uh, Hero and Eric has crossed over to another continent using uh, it, it was like a passage or portal type of thing. And right now, they er arrived at Hado, which is kind of uh, pretty much Japan from Dragon Warrior Three, even the music. Yeah. Um, is it the same music? Yep. Yeah. It's a arranged a little differently, but it's the same music. They um in the English version they all talk in haiku here. Um, it's a uh, something they changed from uh, when they uh, made the translation. Um, I appreciate it because I I like all the little things. Yeah, I wonder if the translators had fun making I, all those haikus. <laughs> I, I I would like I mean I I make haikus on Wednesdays normally. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah haiku Wednesday. Here, Hero's gonna run into uh, a girl who's trying to find her sister. Yeah. Um, and we end up running into Veronica here shortly. Um, who is also looking for her sister. Yeah, the game is pretty nice in that it fills out your party pretty quickly with four people. A little neat time save here. The Chimera Wing right at the start because the next cut the next cutscene is right here. Yeah, once we get Zoom, uh, we won't have any use for these Chimera Wings anymore. But we do make heavy use of them here at the beginning, just to get around a little quicker. Yeah, it saves like. 10, 15, 20 seconds here and there, and in some cases, but like it's well worth the 25 gold, or is it 20 gold in this game, or 25? The Chimera Wings? It's 25. 25, 25 yeah. And you, you'll see that in uh, many other D uh, Dragon Quest speedruns. You just buy um, a bunch of wings, and if it saves you five seconds, then it's worth the 25 gold. Right now, Andy's next destination is the Cryptic Crypt. Uh, one of my favorite things about this game is the unique names they give to the dungeons, to the different places, the enemies. Um, and there, we'll be able to find Veronica's sister um, and who, who we are in the hunt for. Yeah, and this is the other place where we're going to make a safety save. I don't think that we ever make a safety save ever, ever, ever again after this. But again, it's not even a safety save. It's for uh, warping after the after the dungeon. And this is the first fight of a few where things can go a little south pretty easily. Um, if Jarvis downs Hero. You can still finish it very easily with Eric, but and uh, but you, it's on on average it'll be slower. And do you want the experience on Hero? Hero's uh, experience and his level are very finely routed here in the early game to learn specific skills after certain bosses. And if he dies after one of them, you're gonna have to grind somewhere to make up for it. If you haven't played this game before and it seems like we're going in a really roundabout way to get through places, there are a lot of trap floors in this uh, dungeon and you just fall to the, down to the basement and have to go and do it all over again. So there's really just kind of one path to get to where we're going. This encounter right here is actually worth quite a bit of experience. Um, also, if this is a rideable monster, so if the enemies are glowing like that, that means they are mountable and you can use them to get through the dungeon. Yeah. 
And we need just a little bit of experience for Hero to hit that next level and learn Sizz, which is basically the fire move we already had, but an AoE attack. Cool. Looks like uh, the XP route worked out. Yeah. Level 8. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> wow. <laughs> This is probably my favorite monster that you can ride, like honestly, in the whole game. It's just, it's awesome. It goes, it, especially back when, uh, before Sprint existed, this was how you got through dungeons quickly. <laughs> oh yeah. 100%. Um, but, like, it's just a cool monster. So the sound effect he makes when he... Exactly. When like, he goes around. It's the little details. Yeah. Yeah. On the subject of monsters, I've got a question for the team. Kay Fizzle donates $15 and says, So happy to see RPG Limit break back. It's one of my highlights of the year. Most of all, I love me some Dragon Quest. So, question to the team. What are some of your favorite monsters in the series? My favorites are the Golem, Axorus, and Iron Maidens. I'll start. Um, outside of the slimes, because, you know, slimes are the staples. Uh, I would say the... From Dragon Quest VIII, there's something called a Fencing Fox. I think that's one of my favorite uh, monsters. They're pretty much a fox with a hat and a sword. <laughs> I think my favorite monster is, is a boss from this game. It's Booga. It's like the hula hooping demon. <laughs> Big fan. But unfortunately, we don't fight him in this route. That's true. How about you, Purple? Um, let's see. Favorite monsters. I mean, I always like the Gigantus. Um, especially when they're walking around and look super happy. And like, you know. Um, and then there's this one monster in Dragon Quest VIII. I can picture it on the walk um, to... Um, I'll, I'll have to get back to it on that oh, one. I don't remember what it's called. You gotta say the Gigantus yeah, always smiling around. The Gigantus is happy. like the happiest monster ever. Um, and of course, Bone Riders. Oh, like yeah, of yeah, course. Of course. The, the Dragon Warrior 7 joke. Right now, this fight's going pretty well. Uh, Andy's focusing on the ads first, taking them off one by one. Ignore the fact that I attacked Jarvis with Eric accidentally. <laughs> And ideally, we want the attacks to go on either Serena or Veronica. Uh, those are uh, uncontrollable NPCs, and they have infinite health. So it'd be nice if the attacks go on them. And with Sizz, it's very, uh, you can do great damage to the uh, to the ads. So it looks like we've got one more left. So now Andy can just focus on Jarvis. They're doing. Uh, this, but enemies are being very friendly, sending a lot of attacks to Veronica and Serena. Yeah, anytime the the shadows, especially, can use MP on uh, the two sisters, it just saves you a little bit. Serena is a good backup. She does buff and heal your characters. Debating whether I wanted to attack there. Go Serena. He's really close to death. I think I'm just going to start going for it. and I don't need to heal at this point. Hits. Nice. There you go. Good stuff. Yeah. The scariest thing about that is that you can be put to sleep by the shadows. And then if that happens, then you can't defend during a turn where he's doing a really cold breath and you're a little low HP, then you can, like, lose a character. So far, this is going very smoothly. I just noticed the timer, and this is significantly faster than I've ever done that boss. Nice. <laughs> awesome. Probably about a minute and a half faster. Very nice. Yeah, believe it or not, that fight is actually one of the, pr probably the most stressful fight in the first hour. Yeah. Um, so getting, getting through that fast is great. Yeah, I think the the Griffins and that the, that fight both are just like really stressful. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, you we got... didn't we didn't see the he never charged up, which is yeah the scary thing you're you're scared of because then if he charges up, he does the it's an AOE attack that does very high damage, and you pretty much always have to defend for it unless you're both buffed and fully healed or something. And uh, it's just a time waste. You're gonna have to heal after it, and he never did it, which is very nice. Have I got time for a quick dono? Absolutely. Got a $25 from Wells, who says, Let's hear those haikus. I know you have it in you. Hey, chat, let's do this. <laughs> well played. We then have a $15 anonymous donation who unfortunately did not submit a haiku. <laughs> <laughs> so a little feature of this game is the ability to reset your skills. So in any place where you could save the game, you can also reset skills. And uh, we reset Eric's skills because we're going to be moving away to uh, him off of swords and onto a knife. And with that knife ability, you can poison enemies. Uh, the poison is always... I don't think it scales depending on your level or anything. Which means in the early game, poison is extremely powerful. Uh, it, it, it damages the enemy even, uh, every time they act. And in the early game, it does about 50 damage whenever it ticks. Uh, and that is about... I don't know, one and a half times the damage anyone could do with a really strong attack. So landing poison on some of these next few bosses is very, very valuable. After that, poison doesn't really become relevant anymore because it doesn't scale. Yeah, being able to reset your skill points in this game is very nice because it really makes your party customizable. It can build your characters the way you want it, and it's really an aspect that I enjoyed about this game. Having, let's say, Rab focus on claws or have him go to the staff. <clears throat> a lot of different things and different combinations you can do. Or you can be me and say, when I was playing this casually, it's like, reset skills now, nah, just level up four more levels wherever <laughs> I am. I can't afford to get rid of skills. I'll just get to be a higher Collect level. Collect all the skills. <laughs> I, don't th I think the only way you can like fill out all the skill trees is by getting seeds of skill. Yeah. But like, I, I did my darn just to get as close as I could. The area that uh, Annie's in right now is a place called the Tickington. Um, pretty, pretty much a nice throwback to all the older Dragon Quest games. You do quite a lot of side quests. Um, and there's a deep post game that's behind this. Uh, but we, because this is mandatory, we have to visit. We have to uh, give it a little introduction here. That's why we're in, in the place. And that area was added in the Definitive Edition. Um, oops. And... Um, so the Definitive Edition also added a little bit of content in the middle of the game as well. So there's lots of quality of life changes and it added a little bit in between Acts 1 and 2. And you'll notice that when we were in that zone, we were in 2D mode. And you can actually play this game entirely in 2D mode if you want. You never have to touch this 3D and look at the game in 3D if you don't want to. And uh, that presents its own challenges. It'll, if you're playing in 2D mode, you're back to random encounters. You choose all your characters' actions at the beginning of a turn, so it can actually makes the game significantly harder. But there are also advantages to 2D mode, which we will utilize later in the run. We'll, we'll talk about that, but we will be jumping into 2D mode yeah. uh, very shortly. I would highly recommend if you've played this in 3D, if you want to do another run of it, to play just play it in 2D because it's a completely different game, and you can just have... I mean, some of the maps are a little different even. Um, for the most part, you have the same stuff. Like, you find the same stuff, but it's super fun. It's something I've been meaning to do for ages. Yeah. I will say uh, getting the entire book of monsters filled is a little more difficult when you can't see the monsters on the, on the <laughs> world map. Um, but if, you've, if that's one of your goals, you've probably done it in another Dragon Quest game before, so you know what you're getting yourself into. So here we are in a, a place called Galopolis. We'd be, be, be meeting a very unique character named Ferris, um, who's going to be asking the hero for help here. Uh, he's going to be asking the hero to, uh, to pretty much race for him, because he's doing his own little passage of right. And one of the things that he has to do is he has to uh, at least participate in a horse race. I don't know if he has to win it all, but um, he's going to ask hero a favor here.
One of the things you can do is you can zoom indoors. Very, very <laughs> convenient. Ceilings do not exist. <laughs> In 2D mode. <laughs> right. I wonder why, I'm not sure why they got rid of that. Bumping into ceilings. I don't know. Andy right here is buying an upgraded knife for uh, Eric. Yeah, we're, we're, like I mentioned earlier, we're going to move into those knife skills for Eric for the next little bit. Nice. You'll see us, uh, you ever see us randomly jumping after a dialogue, it's because we're mashing B. Because we don't want to initiate conversation again when we're done. But B is the button for jump. So if you ever see us jump at, at the end of a dialogue, there you go. Oh, then I need to do... Yes, Eric. Yep, that looks good. We'll just have to do a quick optimize on Hero and Serena. Yeah. Cool. Good. Oh, I need to buy those holy waters too. I will do that on the way out. Yeah, for long runs like this, everyone has that kind of kind of their own style of how to how to manage inventory, how to manage equipment, and um, Ellie and I both have different styles and uh, kind of have to adapt to work together to decide how we're going to do this. It's been really interesting watching them come together um, and kind of blend their styles together. That's still... He's so fast right now. <laughs> There's no secret tech to this. Um, pretty much collect the boosts, try to cut the corners. It's pretty amazing how the horse can just drip like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, it gets intense when you start hearing the battle theme of this game. <laughs> nice. Oh. 106, you know. My best is a 106.5. Oh, wow. So, point I'm one off. I'm always aiming point to... 14 off. That's, that's pretty good. I'm always looking to shave off those hundreds of a second <laughs> in the place where it matters. Uh, did you play all the racetracks when you were playing it casually? Uh huh. Yeah. Nice. Um, I first played this game in Japanese, and um, I didn't know any Japanese back then, and I couldn't figure out how the races worked, <laughs> and so I just <laughs> didn't play them. I played the one that I had to and moved on. Yeah. Yeah. But here we find out that there's a monster on this desert that uh, Ferris is commanded to go defeat. And uh, Ferris is not up to the task and you get to see him jump in desperate fashion right here, pleading with us to help him. <laughs> Normally I'd be able to zoom out of here back to the entrance, but in a lot of cases the game kind of blocks zoom because there's a cutscene or something that it wants you to encounter first. Also, I need to buy more holy waters. 
Five? I think it's five. Five's good. Yep. Excuse me. The general purpose of Holy Waters in this game is to uh, repel encounters. If heroes' average level is higher than the levels in the particular in that certain area, then they'll be you can negate the encounters by using. If I may read a donation or three, we have a fifty-dollar donation from Winterheart, who says, "So happy to be, so happy to see RPG Limit Break back in action." This is my favorite speedrun marathon, and it's been sorely missed. Good luck to all the runners. We have $100 from Dreezy, who says, happy to see RPG Limit Break back in person. Have a great marathon, everyone. And then we have $25 from Andy Perfect Fans, who says, go Andy Perfect. All right. I legit have no idea who that is. Me neither. But I'm glad they all came together. <laughs> <laughs> So this is a second short little grind. Um, most, the biggest reason we want this grind is for Eric to be able to learn his poison attack, which, if we're unlucky, won't even ever come to play. Usually takes about two or three, well, or two or three encounters to get hero to level ten. Eric should get level ten here. Wow. Again. And if you're ever wondering why I bring Hero to like the middle of the enemies, it's a, a very mi t tiny uh, optimization. If the enemies ever need to attack me or I attack them and there's an animation to do it, it just makes that animation shorter. Moving around has no functional purpose besides speeding things up. I do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we, we also pull these enemies closer together. If they're just singles, usually it's three or four. If they're pulled together, it's usually four or five. And I got the low part of number each time. Depending on the hero's experience, I might need to take one more fight. He might be just, just shy of enough experience, but we'll see. Must have been those monsters you hit at the beginning of the game. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so now we have the one of the harder boss fights in the early game. I say that over and over, but especially in the early game, they all have a little. They're all a little dangerous. This one becomes dangerous if uh, either you can't land the sap to lower the enemy's defense, or you can't land poison to do that extra damage. Each enemy has like a different, um, you could call it a chance probability of having their different status effects stand up on them. So in this case, I think poison's around a, a third. I, th I think the sap is the same thing. Beautiful. <laughs> now that both of those are landed, this is pretty straightforward. This boss is scripted, so he does follow a pattern. Uh, 
That's a little unfortunate. Awesome. Right That's on Silvano. super nice. Silv being the true hero. So your party distribution actually affects the percent of how like how often the enemy attacks certain party or uh, slots. I believe it's like whoever's in the first slot gets targeted like 40% of the time, something like that. And it gets less the further down you get. I'm not sure of the exact odds. Ellie might be able to correct me. Usually like in the typical, or at least in the older games, the, the first... First slot is around 40%, second slot is 30, the rest, uh, the other two are, are lower. Um, but you see us swapping characters around because we want the important characters to be in the back for the hard hitting attacks. So close. Very nice. nice. Very good fight. Awesome fight. I don't remember the last time I got to this point without having a character dead for a boss. I was going to say, like, having <laughs> Serena and Veronica survive that fight is kind of like, I mean, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, not a single hero death through uh, yeah. Jarvis. It's nice to see. Another one of those cases where Zoom is blocked because there's another cutscene as you leave. So right now, our hero in the gang is trying to find something called the Rainburrow. Um, it's a special item that lets them look for the orbs. Uh, right now, their main quest is to look for the orbs um, so that they can get the Sword of Light from Yggdrasil. So that's kind of what their, their goal is right now. The sad part is, in a normal run, like in a true glitchless run, you would be indeed be looking for the orbs. We will not be looking for any of the orbs in this run. <laughs> First thing we're going to do is we're going to do some skill manipulation right here to um, learn our first party-wide heal that we're going to lean on pretty heavily for the entire run. You're going to see Andy do some uh, rectifications here. He's pretty much trying to activate the skill panel that gives him the bonus 10 points. And because of that, it will give him the ability to learn Hustle Dance at this level. Oops. But that requires a little bit of a rectification here and there. Here's the 10 points. So you can learn the skill and then clear it out and you keep those bonus skill points. And then we're going to come down the other side and learn Hustle Dance. Yeah, Hustle Dance is um, extremely overpowered for this part of the game because it's uh, it's kind of like a multi-heal, um, so it heals everyone in your party. And I believe it's based on your charm level? Yep. Yeah, which is pretty awesome. Like, I don't know of any other heal spell that is based on a charm level yeah, a in level of, series. Uh, a lot of Silvando's skills is based off his charm. Oh, is it? Yeah. I mean, he is full of charm, so I <laughs> mean, it, it, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> That's true. But, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's a really great spell, especially for the speed run where you need as much healing as possible because your characters sometimes can only get hit a few times before they're in mortal danger. Yeah, we lean on it very heavily for the next several bosses, and uh, if you if we didn't have a way to learn it, we would probably have to grind to get it, or at least to be able to or do to do something else. Because as it stands, without hustle dance, we're probably not high enough level to do these next few bosses, especially the Coralossus fight. Too easy to go south. Oh, yeah. Yep, 
yeah, before the respects of the PS, like back when it was the PS4, those these fights were extremely difficult, um, and the hustle dance really just helped that all out by making it like kind of consistent. Yeah, we didn't really learn hustle dance until right right before Crystalinda. Yeah. So having cr hustle dance for the spider for the Corrales fight is just essential for the routes that we're using. Yeah. So here we're going to be swapping to um, Great Swords on Hero. Just for just for the next little bit, we'll be swapping back out of it afterward. I'm used to seeing a hero's name as A. <laughs> I honestly thought that hero got replaced somehow. Like, he was just gone. And so earlier we taught Hero Flame Slash. Um, even though we're going to be respecting into Great Swords, we're going to keep Flame Slash because it allows us to do a combined pet move with Sylvando called Tempered Tantrum, which is a, a really nice way to do extra damage. Even though you're using Great Swords, it does more damage. So we're going to leave Flame Sword learned specifically for that combined pet move. We put both these sleeping hibiscuses on Eric. Um, Eric has the highest agility, I believe. So he has the highest chance of outspeeding the Coralossus, and he usually does. Um, and when that happens, we're going to use a sleeping hibiscus, which has a decent chance to put one of them to sleep. It's, ju it's just two of the same enemy. And if we're unsuccessful both times putting him to sleep, it could get a little iffy. But... It's just to make that fight a little more consistent by trying to put him to sleep. Good chance, 75%. Like, yeah, it's pretty high. Certainly one of them will hit. Certainly. Certainly. I'm learning all these percentages with you guys. I didn't know any of this stuff. <laughs> I mean, you taught me that I could run across those rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Something that you'll see us do is that we like to swap accessories around. Uh, we like to give the strength ring that we picked up early in the game to our hard-hitting uh, characters. In the previous menu, Andy gave uh, Hero the strength ring. In combination with the great swords, he is going to be our main damage dealer for the next uh, few fights. Interestingly, not for this fight. The main damage dealer is probably Veronica. But... Oh yeah, for this fight, um, because the, this this boss has a bunch of defense, um, my great swords won't work. But you'll see uh, you'll see a lot of magic spells being used. All right, let's see how this goes. Everyone's yeah. outspeeding him. Great, great turn order. <laughs> Everybody wow. is. But oh, Eric went last. The fastest character. Oh. Figures. Woohoo. Wow. 
And this is where um, the hustle dance comes nice. into play. pretty scary if both of them, if Eric fails to put any of them to sleep, because two attacks will certainly kill a hero, and they also do a, uh, or kill a character, but they also have an AoE attack uh, that does a lot of damage to the entire party. Great, just one more to go. Awesome. He's just... Okay, that's his AoE attack. I might have been able to get away with the Holic here, because I think he's almost dead. But, just playing it safe. I don't even think it's worth attacking. Ooh, double AoE. Oh, he's further away than I thought he was. There you go. Nice. Nice. That was very clean. I can't believe I've seen this sleeping hibiscus fail three times today. <laughs> That's 75% in the other That's direction. That's why I don't know if I believe you guys yeah. if you say 75%. Well, you know, <laughs> percentages in Dragon Quest are just a suggestion. <laughs> so true. So while we were gone, uh, one of the king's henchmen, uh, Jasper, has shown up, and he's gonna try and take us in by attacking us here. Also, shout out to Dragon Quest Eight borrowing this music from Dragon Quest Eleven. <laughs> Good, good number of songs. Yeah. Dragon Quest 8 took from number 11. I wish Dragon Quest 8 would be a little more original, you know? Yeah. This is a, a, a forced death. Even if you win, it does, plays the same cutscene. Sandy's going to take a specific route to get to Jasper. Casually, you're supposed to go inside a building and go through the rooftop. Oh, nice. Nice. Oh, nice dodge. That was very nice. Be home free here. That very beginning good. section is a, a, a tricky one because you have to squeeze through. Uh, the guy isn't always in the same place. He kind of follows different patterns. Yeah. Sometimes he's a little further along already. I can't believe how well this run is going so far. Yeah, and the next boss uh, here is going to be the main damage dealer, and we're going to start using oomph strategies, so doubling up his power. He's going to be using uh, great swords, and um, we're going to try sapping, and uh, Serena is going to be buffing characters, and we'll see what happens. Um, and then also Silvando is our, our big healer. But yeah. Is that it? Yeah, that's all I need. I believe Jasper alternates between two turns and one turn. So he's going to start off with a double move and then alternate one move, two moves. So we're leaning pretty heavily on the cutting edges in this fight. Nice. nice. And we're lying and we need that sap to land, which it did, thank goodness. Veronica going down before a sap lands can be eaten. Yep. Okay. Ending. Perfect. Fine. She did her job. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, Jasper did something called Sword Stance, which gives him an ability to uh, block attacks. Nice. 
A little unfortunate, but these are the two characters I need alive. Yep. And hopefully hero pep so I could do a temper tantrum, which is a, a bigger attack. Nice hit right there. We actually do want Hero getting hit. It's just to build up that pet. There you go. There you go. Very nice. I'm doing it earlier. Technically, your d attack is uh, bigger if you wait. Nice. Very nice fight. Yeah, very good. Technically, it's it's best to, if the fight's going to go on a while to just attack and use your pet move at the end. But I wanted to make sure I got it off before the sap ended. We have our control of the boat. Hero's just high enough to negate encounters in the ocean uh, toward uh, the next area. So right on your left here, you'll see the time gate where we went all the way to Hodo. Oh, is that it right there? Yeah. Right now, Andy's um, going to go through, he's going to do some treasure scavenging. He's going to get the return point the next town, and he's going to pick up some important items along the way. Because right now, we need to prepare ourselves for uh, one of the tougher sections of the speedrun in Act 1. Um, that includes getting some seeds, some important equipment. Yeah, the game puts you back with just hero. And... Uh, I think the game also, I mean, there's certain expectation that you're a certain level at this point. And uh, we are nowhere near that expected level. So to kind of make up for that, we're going to forge some equipment that probably is kind of expected that you would explore that area and get it later. But technically you have access to it now, so we can forge it early and get our defense to a point where that arena becomes doable. As you play this game casually, you'll notice that Hero is in quite a lot of situations where he's battling himself, uh, battling by himself. And there's going to be quite a few fights upcoming with Hero. Solo Hero. Well, with, with an NPC. So like Ellie mentioned, we're going to be... We have to we go by Octagonia anyway, so we're going to swing by and get it as a zoom location. Because so we have to go way further to get all the equipment that we need. those like half syllable Japanese expressions with super tons of like emotion into it. Love it. I mentioned earlier we can take advantage of the horse healer. We can pretty much summon the horse wherever we, we want. That was one of the quality of life changes they added to the definitive edition. Yeah. In the base game you could only summon the horse at the bells that are scattered around. Uh, they're still there, so you can kind of get an idea of where you could have originally summoned them, but they just had it so you can use it anywhere. Also, originally, they had the crossbow target minigame, and they removed it from the definitive edition, because in the older speedruns, we would actually use that minigame to grab the seeds of defense, but they took it out. Yeah, I think it gave you, like, the reward was, like, six or something. Yeah, it was it was like six or six or seven seeds. And the seeds of um, life gives you five health each. Yeah. So it's essentially like raising heroes HP by thirty. And it was which like is huge. Yeah, it was like each area had a different type of seed. It was it was so I liked it. Um some people found it very difficult to find the targets and found it frustrating. But uh yeah, I think I think it was something that I would like to see again in a Dragon Quest game. The reward was definitely worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Especially in the speedrun where you weren't really looking for them. You knew where they were. So it was just a free like amount of defense. Absolutely. Yeah, it was great. Oh. 
Oh. Oh. This is why we don't speedrun platformers. <laughs> Mario, Mario games. Oh, that dragon. Yeah, we just pick up. There's two chests up there. I only picked up one. The other is a mimic. And finding it at this level would probably kill me. The dragon scale is essentially just a better strength ring. The audio was really strong in my head in these headphones, and I heard the squeaking of climbing up the rope. I never heard that sound before. <laughs> Uh, one thing that's really important in this game is learning how to uh, use great motion or movement while you're doing the game. Um, and I recently went back and tried to play the 3D version of this game, and I forgot how hard it is actually controlling the character <laughs> and, the, and the camera. So, like, these guys make it look amazing, and I just have to point that out because it's kind of second nature to them a little bit at this point so it's so they won't point it out themselves but that is actually something that's very hard and they're both really good at it so here this is the the chest held a couple recipes for uh the dundrasil armor and the dundrasil uh helmet and we're forging those right now to put on to put both of them on hero so that the arena fight essentially becomes doable Technically, you can forge them and give them a small bonus, but it's nowhere near worth the time it takes to do it. Yeah, we're essentially getting failure, because even if you get failure, you're still getting the base stats. It's huge for us. The only reason why we're able, actually able to get this armor is because we can buy the materials. Otherwise, the materials would be available to pick up on Act 2. Yeah, that was a quality of life thing they introduced into this, this version, right? That you could buy the materials you didn't have, or some of them. Yeah, yeah, originally you had to either find them or buy them from one of the sellers at one of the campsites or something. Right. But here, if, if you can buy to the campsite, you can buy it right when you're forging weapons and stuff. Right. So here we're entering like a little uh, arena battle royale type thing. And we're entering here to find out what or who our partner is. Everyone randomly gets assigned partners in here. And we're finding out that we're with the one and only Vince who w keeps winning. And this whole, this whole area is all about finding out why Vince keeps winning. Something's going on. Also, shoutouts to Chapter 2 of DQ4. <laughs> So there's four fights during the arena. All of them have like a, a, a chance to kill you, but thankfully if any of them do, it just gives, lets you try again. mystified by the sound of the fire during that scene. <laughs> so the first fight is with the Underdigger and the Abominable Showman. Um, we want to focus on the left guy because he creates clones of himself. Uh, the right guy is still pretty dangerous because he has a good chance of critting and ideally we want those... Every enemy that we fight here, they, we want them to attack Vince because he has... Since he's an uncontrollable character, he's going to have infinite health. Yeah, and the that guy has a chance to crit you up to about around 67 damage. They're gonna they're gonna pep together now, so I don't have to I don't have to worry about the crit. On the third turn, they always pep together. It does about 55 damage. Oh, I guess he could have crit me. <laughs> I mean, that's just some some because usually the this is showman fine. goes first before him. Very dramatic. <laughs> Yeah, 
Sounds great in Japanese. It really does. I'm still a little low. I'm actually in crit, crit range right now. But a strong medicine's a little much, so I'm just going to heal myself. There we go. Yep. Vince is kind of scripted to usually heal you when you're low on health. But Vince does Vince things and usually never does when you want him to. Like, not attacking the person who's almost dead. There you go. There you go. Oh, I don't think he summoned any ads up. No, he didn't. But... He never summoned copies? No. I don't think so. Not once. Isn't he always supposed to? I thought he always does on, like, his turn two. Why didn't that happen? They, <laughs> I, I think this, this is a run to study now. <laughs> I, like, don't, I don't know because why Because that was nice. Now we gotta take a deeper analysis of that fight. Yeah. <laughs> Got a quick donation here, if you don't mind. We have $25 from Lady Perfect, who says, Good luck, Andy. Love your wife and son. Hello. And he's going to purchase a few more strong medicines to finish off the rest of all I can afford. Usually you're by nine there, but I only have money for seven. There you go. Here we kind of find out why Vince fights in the arena. He watches over an orphanage. But he's also got some shady stuff going on that makes him as strong as he is. He's got to deal with a spider. As one does. It's a pretty tough fight. Cinderella has some hard hitting spells. Yeah, that... Frizzle and Sizzle. The first can do up to like 60 damage. So I'm actually going to play it safe. Nice. That's a status effect to negate a turn there. Watched it. Guess we're targeting him now because the other one's fully healed. <laughs> oh, Vince. Oh, Vince, yeah. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh. Yeah, there it is. Let's try again. Thankfully, that wasn't too deep into the fight. Yeah. And these rounds, it's just so easy to die in the arena, mm -hmm. especially the, the last three fights. That's good. Frizzle went on Vince. Vince is cooperating. We should be fine. Yeah, it was pretty scary because he didn't get an opportunity to defend, but it worked out. There we go. That's what I needed. Yeah. Nice. Down? Good. Nice. This, this is what yeah, we that was see. great. Yep. So that charms me. I've lost control of my character. So hopefully Vince keeps me alive if I drop low. Oh, I've already healed. Okay. <laughs> Almost there. Nice. Nice. Yeah. We got two more. Um, next one. Oh, Silvando and Face. 
the bullion boys. There's really a lot of these fights. The strategy usually just you just follow whatever Vince does to hopefully target get someone down fast. So usually just hoping Vince targets someone and then keeps targeting them. Really, the scary damage deal here is Silvando. The Golden Boy doesn't hit too hard, but he does have a move called uh, Starburst Throw. That Golden Boy is almost dead if, if, if Vince targets the guy on the left with a decent attack. Oh, yeah. that is it. Vince, Vince cooperated. Yeah. You love to see it. <laughs> So you're hoping the turn order works like that, so that if you do get dropped below health, Vince just immediately heals you out of it. He's actually hitting me pretty hard, considering there's only one guy left having to heal pretty frequently. Nice. Cool. Not too shabby. Alright, for the next fight, um, both the enemies are have very strong attacks. So we kind of follow the strategy of defending until Rab runs out of MP, unless something exceptional happens. So things that can even make this go south, even when you're defending a lot, is Rab casting sleep on you. He's targeting Rab quite a bit, which is tempting. I should be fine defending. Yeah. And Vince, as usual, not healing me. If Rab had done an attack there, he could have killed me. I'm still not healing you. Jade might be pretty low, actually. Wow. wow, two hard claws that are wow. up. Dang, he's focusing on Jade quite a bit. Oh, before I get an attack to try and end it. So Rab is probably getting close to running out of MP. Maybe like one or two turns and Rab's out of MP. Is. Uh, but now we have the the, pep to com the combined pep move coming up. If we get another attack, we might be able to kill Rab before we, they get a chance to do it. Or Jade, whoever's lower. Oh, never mind. I'm playing it very safe because I'm at the very end of the fight and I don't want to do this again. <laughs> Sweet. Nice. First I don't, don't want to take two deaths in the arena. Sure. First try, Rab and Jade. Take those. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's just so many things that can go wrong in that specific fight, just with sleep alone. But I mean, you can get tripped and then just not have Vince heal you. And, yeah. And then it's, and it can be like 20 rounds into the fight. Oh, I didn't sleep. Oh, and I zoomed to Gondolia. <laughs> I forgot that I was supposed to sleep there. I've definitely done that a couple of times. Why did I just get the herbalist achievement?
I'm really confused about why I got that achievement just now. What was the achievement? Herbalist. We're collecting like 20 plants or something. I don't even... I've never seen that achievement. But you got it from zooming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Weird. Hour and a half here, so I'd like to give a quick update on the incentives we have for this run. Thanks to several anonymous donations and a $100 donation from Clouder, the Puff Puff incentive is just about three quarters of the way done, but nice. still needs just a little bit to get there. And Silvando's stinking gift needs about 300 more dollars for that incentive to be met. Seems that there's a lot of demand for it. The, the Puff Puff, I should say, because we have a $5 donation from Double Take who says, in all caps, I must stress, Puff Puff, please! <laughs> Good luck, runners! We also have a $50 donation from Hactical, who says, Have fun, Andy and Ellie. Always great to see some DQ, especially on day one. Don't let Purple Mario give you bad luck on the spider. <laughs> wow, great timing, Hactical. <laughs> great timing. I know who to blame. And these incentives, these cutscenes are some of the best cutscenes in the game, so... The closer we can get to them, you'll, you'll, I promise you guys, you'll be rewarded with some great cutscenes. Yeah, we definitely want as much Sylvando as we can get. Oh yeah, big yeah. time. Oh no! It's always a race against the clock when you get caught in the webs and there's an enemy aggro. Just like, get through, get through, get through. <laughs> there's a, an Yggdrasil leaf that's a, a revive item. I'm going to pick it up as a safety right here. Because this spider is, I don't know, it might be the most p common death to, or boss to die on in the game. Especially it, Act it, 1. If not the um, most common one, one of. There's no, the things that, the, the, the thing that makes it a little more common to die at is this boss is, there's zero scripted going on. And he gets two actions per turn. And if the actions go poorly, um, it can get out of control real fast yeah we don't really want to see his aoe attack aoe attack it's called a volley of strings um he if he keeps following that turn after turn then that's where we get in trouble like doing that and then stunning Silvando or something yeah uh Ando. Pretty lengthy fight coming up. Same big basic strategy as before. We're wanting to hero to be the mass, the yep. main dealer. Oh, there goes Serena. Is it worth reviving her? Do you think? I don't think so. Oh, nice sap. Can I go ahead and bring Eric in? He's like, uh, that's a good plan. Yeah. But he topped off. Serena being dead is sad because it means I don't get the, um, I can't buff and raise my party's defense. Oh, oh my, my goodness. Gosh. Wow. Oh, now we got to play some good orange. Yep, that's good. Don't hit anybody. Oh, wow. Uh, she doesn't, I guess I can. That's big. Yeah. Okay. I might be able, I think I can recover from this, depending on, see what he does now. Good. Nice. That's fine. Good turn. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and... I'd really like to be oomphing hero right now, but alas. I'm just trying to stay alive. That's fine. 
Nice. That was actually really nice. Sylph has the only ability to knock someone out of confusion, so only way he can... Oh! Oh! <laughs> not, I thought that knocked him out. At least he tried. Oh my. Hopefully he had grabbed us Kefuddle or something. Uh, I gotta play it safe here. Come on, Defuddle. Don't you dare. Oh, oh, come on. This is getting very scary. Keep everybody topped off. Good plan. Come on, Defuddle. Oh. Just disappointing. At least, he did it. At least he attacked. Wow. I'm gonna win with confused party members just randomly attacking. Oh. That's good. Uh Nice. Ah. Please don't kill Hero. Dang it. Okay. Eric has an Idris to leave so I can revive Hero. I'll I'll definitely do Boulder Bringer. Once Eric gets a chance to act, doesn't need to do anything else. Uh, uh. Don't. Oh, nice. thank goodness. Nice. 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 Hi. Very powerful bleed that Andy's applying here. Hopefully, now I want Veronica to go because I want Veronica to kill Hero. Uh, I think I just gotta do this. I haven't been able to oomph a single time yet. That's incredible. Keep the sap applied. This is where it gets real scary. Oh. He's, he's close. Um, I think we just try and keep applying poison. And then just keep everyone alive and try and outlive the poisons and hey, that. Nice. Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was stressful. What a silly fight. <laughs> Wasn't there a comment in about Purple Mario? Yeah, that's, that was tactical. <laughs> Purple Mario Thank goodness picked up that Yggdrasil right. leaf. That wouldn't have happened without Eric reviving Hero in the middle of that. Usually, if it goes long enough for Aractagon to pep, it's pretty much over. But thankfully, he was close enough, and Eric had gotten off that pep attack. And the his poison and the Scorched Earth were doing about 100 damage every action. That poison did a lot of work in that fight, yeah. seriously. Normally, Hero would be oomphed twice, <laughs> but didn't get a single oomph off. Yeah, a double oomph with a sap. Hero's doing like 160-ish. Yeah, Hero's doing like 80. So if you're wondering what that fight looks like before we had Hustle Dance, for a while he was not able to use Hustle Dance, and that was exactly it. You spent entire rounds basically using strong medicines to keep everyone alive um, and just, just kind of prayed. But, yeah. Yeah, Hustle Dance value multiplies it's, like a billion in this fight. Yeah. Hey, the, the Erectagon fight can take as long as it wants. As long as I don't die, I'm happy. Right, because the walk back and everything, and like doing it again is just, it's so much extra time. And, and like we mentioned earlier, the the game is very forgiving in the auto saves, but in that, that's one of the cases where it does auto save, but it all saves at the beginning of the dungeon. So it's like a three minute walk back, plus however deep into the fight you were.
So if you're familiar with this game, we're really only like halfway through Act 1 if you're playing normally. But we're going to do a glitch that has been known for several years, actually. Uh, and skip pretty much the rest of Act 1. Before that, we're going to do some grinding to make up for the fact that we're skipping a big chunk of Act 1. Picking up two items right here, this Devil's Tail. Or, uh, I guess the coin's over there. Devil's Tail over here reduces shadow damage. Huge help for the Tyrion fight. And everything involving Dundersil is basically a shout-out to Dragon Quest V, and as is this music. Um, if you've played Dragon Quest V, you know exactly where this theme is, and it is Ooh. one of the best themes in the series, in my opinion. Is this song from Dragon Quest V? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's great. I'm not as well versed in the Dragon Quest series as I should be. I've only played 1, 2, 3, 8, and 11. So I miss, there's a lot of gaps there. Yeah, this whole section right here re reveals a lot of critical um, plots, plot twist points, you want to call it? The lore. Yeah, the lore. The lore. A lot of important stuff happens. Yeah. Still got Hendrix army uh, chasing us. Another one of those times where I lost control of my character and I just ran to the left. That last cutscene is really good. Just saying. If you've never played this game, definitely watch that cutscene. So this is going to be the first instance of swapping to 2D mode. Um, we have a, uh, any good speed run of um, Dragon Quest is going to have a nice metal, grind, a metal slime grind. And uh, interestingly, I guess the original PC version had a very short one, like before Yggdrasil. But um, the when the definitive edition originally released, there was no metal slime grind at all. And oh, whoops! This version has reintroduced the metal slime grind. Oh gosh! Sometimes those boats can be tricky to control. <laughs> We can do a story trigger here and now give them the... Because the way the 2D and 3D mode swaps, uh, it chooses a point in the story uh, that you can uh, that you select. Um, and by doing some dialogue here and going through the gate, that'll give them the next, uh, call it checkpoint. Yeah, the, even uh, even though Jade swap. and Rab are in our party, if we swap to 2D mode right now, they're no longer in our party. So you have to hit the next checkpoint to keep them. Did it do it again? Yeah. Oh, wow. So it even does it in the boat? I guess so. I'm not used to that. Wow. Okay, so now we're going to hit a new checkpoint. You get a special, like, that blue box right there is indicating that a new checkpoint area. So now we're going to do a ton of equipment management and stuff and skill resetting to prepare ourselves for a metal slime grind. And we're going to do that in 2D mode. Uh, 
Fish great swords. Oops. And then we're going to move Rab's Cane to Hero, because it's essential for a future fight that Ellie will be doing. Then. Here we're going to be transferring uh, Rab's and Jade's equipment to Savannah and Eric. Um, also going to be equipping the boomerang to Eric, the uh, regular sword to hero. Uh, lets them use their metal slime skills. And he's going to teach Jade lightning thrust, which is a move that lets you crit. Useful for the metal slimes. And then on to 2D mode. Nice. So yeah, if you want, you can play this entire game in 2D mode. You never have to play in 3D. And it's a totally different experience. Call throwback to the classic Dragon Quest games. The controls are a little different. Uh, I want Andrew. Some of the menuing uh, UI is also different. Cool. And he's going to head to Galopolis. He uses his crankshot bow to basically acts like a whistle, lets you spot enemies immediately. Sound effect is great. Typically, you want to avoid chimeras because they. Oh, flee. I did it. Oh. <laughs> oh no. I think we've both we've all, we've all done this in our practice. <laughs> yeah, this is this the one thing that we forget to do. Very common. It's uh, changing the battle speed. Yeah. Thankfully, that was a pretty short turn. Also, like, one of them ran away. So. Yeah, the chimeras run away. Yeah. If the fight is all chimeras, I have to run from this. So the big reason why we're doing the Metal Slime grind in 2D mode is that it has quite a lot of advantages, including pet builds up quite fast, uh, and you're also able to queue in pet moves, or queue in moves along with your pet. And you'll see here uh, right now, Andy's trying to build up Alleluia, and that needs Jade, Hero, and Eric. And what Alleluia does is that it gives a multiplier of your XP and gold and guaranteed items. And we just care about the experience because we're doing the grind. Our main goal is to get Silvando to level 25, and that'll give him the it'll give him enough points for him to learn uh, Gold Rush. Uh, the main purpose of this grind is to help us uh, speed up the scenario, uh, right? Because pretty much we're going to be done with Act One after this grind, uh, so we're setting ourselves up. So we're going to be summoning Metal Slimes with another pet move called Electrolyte. For that, you need Silvando, Jade, and Hero. So in combination with Alleluia and Electrolyte, we're just hoping for a big jackpot when it comes to the experience of the Metal Slimes. And the highest rolls that Alleluia can give you is three times. So let's say a Metal Slime gives you 2,000 experience. Uh, the most that an Alleluia can give you is 6,000. And the when it comes to the Electrolyte, the three Metal Slimes spawn. Oh, <laughs> come on. Or you get this, you get the hunter, which is uh, 
we don't want to see. Very low chance to get the hunter, roughly 15%. Um, and it sucks because we build up all that <laughs> hallelujah just to summon the, the hunter because we're looking for metal slimes. This is just the part where, you know, if you're trying to go... Um, your, your run could just die here if you get bad luck. Nice. Nice. Might as Bonus. well. Gonna see here if we can get some more metal slimes on top of that other one. Uh, this area actually has metal slimes that you can encounter, just very low chance. You see Andy just mashing through defend here, so that turns can pass by quickly and you can try to get your pet. Just waiting for Jade to go up. Okay. So, wrap out for Eric. And then in for Silvando. Using his Alleluia here. Then he has to build up Pep for Electrolyte. If I'm if I'm lucky, this will only take three. Uh, it should only take three fights if you're lucky. Average is probably four. Yeah, it comes down to that multiplier. HPs are getting a little iffy. Wait, this turn here. Oh, grabs down. And here you can queue in attacks while you're using the pet move. Something yeah. that you can't do in 3D mode. So isn't this is a good advantage <laughs> to have? Unfortunate. Oh. All right, at least two stuck around. All right, so we still got three. Three, yep. 16,000 Six, for wow. three. Wow. That seems that was really a great high. multiplier for, for that. 4,000. That was three, so 6,000. Yeah. And I got, six, how much experience did I get? 16,000? A lot. Just shy of 3x. And here, uh, Andy's going to teach Hero Metal Slash. And it also unlocks a very good uh, pep ability called Metal Melody, something that Hero <laughs> and Eric can do together. Um, as long as Eric is pepped up, it can it'll guarantee a it'll guarantee a Liquid Metal Slime kill. Why isn't it available right now? You have to move down one step. Oh, do I? Oh. Okay. I think everybody healed up from the level. Oh, because because Rab's dead. Yeah. Yeah. Does he need to be getting experience from this? No. No. Okay. Might as well put the dead person in so it uh, goes a little faster. I believe you just need one more level for the hero to summon the next scoop of uh, electrolyte enemies, which include the liquid metal slime. Oh, whoops. Gosh. I didn't mean to do that. I meant to do hallelujah. I guess we're doing this. A little oh, unfortunate, I just did the wrong pet move. If we're really lucky, Savannah's level 20, you can get to level 25 in one more attack, one more fight. And now he's high enough to get liquids, I think. So that's the one benefit of this.
I do have to run from the Chimeras because they can run as well. So while you're setting up the um, the big attack. Might as well. I do find it easier to find Metal Slimes when you're just running around in 2D mode <laughs> <laughs> compared to 3D. He's sticking around. Nice. <laughs> nice, nice enough to let Jade poke him. Same idea. Build up Alleluia. Then build up Electrolyte. Let's wait on Jade to do Hallelujah. Savando's already pepped, so now we're just waiting for Jade and Hero. Oh, cool. All at once. Would you do the pep here with Eric? You would do it after the next turn. Okay. So you do it next turn, yeah. I guess because you only do one pep per turn. Yep. Nice. There's some good rolls with the metal liquor. Prayers that the liquid sticks around. So kill this metal slime. Very nice. Awesome. Let's see the roll. 25. 25. 25. Nice. 23. So we're going to definitely need another one. Yeah. But yeah, just one more will do it. as we get a ridiculous number of levels. Do I have... There we go. Yeah, I have it now. Okay. My camera is going to run away from that. Back again. Maybe they, they might run away for me. I know more chimeras. There we go. Oh gosh. <laughs> you were predicting chimeras on that one. <laughs> I guess so. It's just RNG manipulation. It's all. It's just so easy, like you're in uh, yeah, in mode to like quickly tap up to defend with everybody. It's easy to do it before pressing A for the first time. You might ask, well, how come you're not speedrunning the entire category in 2D mode? Well, the problem is you can't skip cutscenes in 2D mode. You have oh, to can watch. you not? No, you can't. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, um, and then you still have to deal with random encounters, whereas in 3D mode, where Obviously trying to dodge all the encounters that we are trying to avoid everything. So having to go through the maps and not being able to skip cutscenes make this makes this category uh, significantly slower. Now we're building up for Electrolyte. As long as we don't get the 15% roll for the robots, we're done after this. Yeah, just waiting for Jaden Hero right now. There it is.
We might get lucky, and if we get a good roll, Savando might go up all the way up to 26. Nice. Get, killing the liquid's the main thing. And we're gonna get everything here. Yeah, yeah, Savannah looks, got all the way to 26. Great. I don't think I've gotten all, him all the way to 26 before. The absolute silence as you level up. That takes care of that grind. That's the last grind of the game, right? Yeah, there are no more grinds. Yeah. yeah. Net grind only really exists to take the place of like the bosses that you're skipping with with the skip that we're about to do. Exactly. Yeah. So then we need to do some skill or uh, change our skills up now that we're done with that grind to put everyone back where we need to be for Act Two. It's possible that we might be a little bit slightly short in gold, so we're probably gonna have to sell some things if that's the case. Now we have two thousand. Hopefully be enough. Saw. Do I need to rectify first? No, you can learn uh, multi thrust, just enough points. Oh, I guess I have extra left over, too. I think uh, you got a couple extra level ups there. Anything? Probably not. Oh, and dueled. Now that we earned a lot of skill points, we're teaching uh, the characters a lot of their uh, powerful skills, including Gold Rush right, right here with Silvado, one of the super good damage dealing moves, which costs gold but does roughly three, 300 damage. Oh, wait, no. I want the. Okay, I think that's everything. So normally if you were playing the game through without glitches or anything, you would now go out and it's kind of the, so the search for the orbs has begun. Um, you kind of go, you start fight the birds, you have to fight several bosses that kind of hold in the orbs that you get. But instead of doing any of that, we're gonna do what's something that is, oh, I forgot to do the holy water. We're gonna do something that is affectionately called the horse glitch. Ellie, you want to go ahead and describe how the horse yeah, glitch sure. works? And the only way this glitch is possible, it can only be done on PC because it requires a mouse with a high DPI. I've always wondered if you could like hook up a mouse to the Switch version somehow with that was some my question. third party with, hardware. Like with the PS5, because the Definitive Edition is, works with the PS5. I know the PS5 has a mouse attachment to it, but um, because that the mouse has a high DPI, we're able to spin the camera fast enough so that the horse can actually go out of bounds. Um, we're going to utilize the spinning to force the horse out of the, uh, out on places where you're not supposed to be. 
it'll become a very apparent very quickly that we're not supposed to be where we are. The glitch is going to take place in a few screens, but essentially, um, once you finish the glitch, you're going to be pretty much at the Yggdrasil tree. And as Andy was describing, you need the orbs to get to that area. Because of this glitch, you just go straight to Act 2. Um, but we're not going to quite do that, because we still need to do... We have to defeat one boss. Yeah, we need to defeat one boss, and we have a specific reason for that, too. It'll help us save time uh, in Act 2. So you have you have access to an area where the map connects to the final like the final area of the game or final area of Act One, the Yggdrasil tree. So because we can access the area now, you there's a lot. There might be other places that we might be able to apply this glitch. That there's been lots of exploration in, in, into this glitch about getting out of bounds, maybe accessing areas early. But this is by far and away the most effective way and place to do it. So when I do it, uh, I will be spinning the camera pretty violently. So if like fast changing colors bothers you, I'll probably tell you to look away. And we use the mouse so we can rotate the camera like 300 or multiple times per second. And as you you kind of like put yourself in a position so that as you rotate it, the, the horse kind of like slides like along the cliff and you have the map open so you can't zone out and you go past the, the, the zone area. Okay, here we go. Just need to go past that green line. That should be good. That looks good. Uh, a little more. Yeah, that's perfect. So now we got behind the green line, so now we're technically in an out-of-bounds area. Let's see if I don't zone through the ground. Oh, oh, I did. Yeah, doing this glitch could be a little bit finicky. Um, you do face through the ground. Um, we're not exactly sure the reason why, but the way to mitigate that is that we turn the camera uh, behind Hero. Because um, it feels like what, what we discovered is that if you have the camera on, looking more. forward, Hero has a good chance of falling through the map. Horse doesn't want to go. Not moving at all. Ah. I guess I'm not in a good setup for it or something. Ah. It's nice to just find that right spot through the, the spinning. Okay, I'm moving up a little bit. Yep. Need to safely get past that green line. That should be it. Ah, oh. yeah, this part, sometimes if just the game doesn't want to cooperate you and you fall through the ceiling, it could take us sometimes five, ten minutes. Keep going, little horsey. Oh, a little more. There we go. But I'm not sure problems. what's going on. From past experience, it seems like it has something to do with the camera angle. That's the closest thing I can identify. Is the horse even moving? 
Looks like he's stuck on the green line. He's on. Okay, he's going. There we go. Okay, we're good now. Just casually running through rocks. <laughs> yeah, right now Andy's in an area that you're obviously not supposed to be. He's gonna go through a specific route um, to get to the other side. Because what's blocking the normal, the normal playthrough, Arborea, is blocking you. And you can see the minimap on the bottom left, where I'm supposed to be, and where I am. All right, very nice. Okay, that's nice. the horse punch done. So, and technically right now, we can go and move on to Act 2, but to make things a little faster, I'm not exactly sure of all the side effects of not fighting Tentacular right now, but talking to Kai allows you to then choose to lie to Michelle in Act 2, and I do know that's critical. I'm not exactly sure of all the side effects of not doing that. Do you know more than that? <laughs> Outside of, you know... If we don't do this, we are going to be have to do the, you know, Octagonia, the Dundra Cell. Um, we have to do extra bosses. Because normally when we, in order to get the harp, we have to go through Octagonia. We have to defeat Jaden Buga. But because we can save uh, Michelle in that state, um, we don't have to do that to get the harp. Just get the harp instantly by talking to her. Because we did the grinds, um, the consequence of doing this is that we are skipping a bunch of bosses, including um, Dorian Gray, uh, Crystalinda, Jor, or I like the birds. Um, we did that grind also to make up the experience that was lost in those fights. So skipping, that we skipping the Crystalinda fight also has a really interesting side effect in Act Two. Once you go back there, <laughs> the whole town is in a very weird state. Yeah, it's basically broken. So we're just going to come up here and enter the Yggdrasil tree just to get it as a zoom location and then hop out and go do Tentacular real fast and then come back and finish Act 1. Just about halfway through the run. Quick update. We've received an anonymous $50 donation, and we've received a $5 donation from Mirioki, who says, Great to see Limit Break again. With this, we have cracked $3,000, but the incentives we have for this run still have a ways to go. There aren't just incentives for the runners, however. There are incentives for you, the viewers. Yes, you. I'm talking to you. You are incentivized in the form of prizes. $5 donated by the end of this run puts you in the running for three separate prizes we have here today. We've got a Dragon Quest themed mouse pad featuring a whole bunch of monster designs throughout the series. We've got a set of Kingdom Hearts playing cards, and then we have the Kingdom Hearts all-in-one collection for PlayStation 4. $15 donated by the end of this run puts you in the running for a beautiful Kingdom Hearts acrylic print. So, please do get the let out, get the word out. 
and get those incentives met. And remember, all the money we raise this week goes toward a good cause. One in five Americans live with a mental health condition. We at RPG Limit Break are proud to be raising this money for NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, a charity which works tirelessly toward cracking the code of mental illness through education, leadership, and expanding the availability of care across the country. Please join RPG Limit Break in supporting a worthy cause. Andy, during that sailing uh, section, you used the holy water before the other one ran out. Is yeah, it's just to skip the the text that's of the, what, of the yeah. holy water running out. That's what I was kind of thinking. Does does the text actually um, stop you? Like, does it yeah, make it you clear? Yeah, it stops the movement. Okay. Yeah. Is there a specific place like that you know where it's going to run out? Yeah, it's roughly at those lighter color mountains when you start entering that area. Okay. It was probably like three to four seconds after I used it, but yeah, you can use it in a pretty wide area, and it lasts all the way to Lanolulu. Great. This is a pretty satisfying fight because we're entering this fight pretty over leveled. We have a very powerful skills, um, so this fight is no threat to us. It's especially satisfying for any DQ8 runner who has died to this boss <laughs> hundreds of times. This is the first instance of using Gold Rush. Gold Rush is a very powerful move. It does about 300 to everybody. And um, it costs uh, it uses 1,000 of your gold to cast it. We're going to be leaning very heavily on Gold Rush for the rest of the run. It's just such a reliable source of damage. It ignores defense. Very close. Probably yeah. need another hit. Nice. That's getting time to shine there. <laughs> that felt great. So now, yeah, we're just going to walk through here until we get to the point where we talk to Kai. And that gives us the ability to advance dialogue with Michelle next time we go there, which won't be until Act 2. At which point we'll lie to her and... I actually don't know what happens if you tell the truth. Because eventually she'll want to go back and meet with Kai, right? Yeah, if you're doing that too, I have no idea what happens. <laughs> I just know you don't want to do that. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's always like, I wonder what happens, but I'm not willing to do it in a run. <laughs> So as soon as we talk to Kai up here, we're going to head back to the Yggdrasil tree and watch the tree fall. Pick up a few key items that we'll use in Act 2. Pick up an Yggdrasil leaf as a safety, Panacea, which is a, a nice heal, possibly during the Tyrion fight, and Yggdrasil Dew, which is a full heal. All are going to be valuable, I mean, depending on how different fights go, they, they'll be used in different places. There's going to be a force encounter with Jasper uh, right before the end of Act 1. It's it's unwinnable. Uh, the fight will ev end eventually. But yeah, this is the point where Hero grabs the Sword of Light, but uh, Jasper, Mortagana, 
obviously come in. Put the world to ruin. And Ellie and I will be swapping off as soon as this little cutscene is over. As the second half of the run begins. Yeah, this is a scripted fight. As soon as uh, he's, Jasper takes his third action, he kills everybody. Or he sets everyone to 1 HP and the fight ends. Regardless of what you do up to that point. Alrighty. That's act one. On, to, right. on to Ellie. Alright, great job, All right. Andy. Great job, Andy. Alright, Andy alluded to this earlier. They did add stuff in the middle. Um, we call this the scenarios. Kind of fills in the gaps of what happens after the uh, tree falls. No, we're going to start off with Silvando here. And it is kind of nice that they added these scenarios. I mean, if you played the base game of this, you kind of like characters join and they're doing these crazy things. And you're like, how on earth did these people get to this point? And that's what they filled in this gap, these scenarios to kind of more explain what they were doing and how they got to what they were doing when you encounter them in Act 2. Because Act 2 is the classic scenario of heroes back alone and you kind of have to get your party and the gang all back together. In terms of speed, the speed run, this scenario is basically a walking simulator, so Silvana will be getting a quite a workout here <laughs> and we'll be taking advantage of, so we learned gold rush at the end of act one we used it a little bit on tentacular but we use it extensively in this fight this fight for example is trivial now because it's over <laughs> <laughs> Like, we even route in certain items, equip an item on Silvando so that uh, we can sell it so that we have ability to do yet another gold rush in this scenario. Because Silvando always starts with exactly 3,000 gold here, but having the ability to do one more gold rush is very useful for the next boss here. Right now, Silvano's actually by himself, and getting to these encounters can be scary, especially like if you're doing a 2D, 2D mode run, you're just running around by yourself. It gets a bit freaky. Yeah, during the scenario, you get little uh, band members that join you, and um, they kind of take their own actions. They have infinite health. Kind of how uh, your character is like when Silvano first joins you for the Slayer of Sands fight. He's, by, he's in the party, but he kind of does his own thing, and he has infinite health. Uh, all these other characters do the same thing. But yeah, fighting enemies before any of them joins is very tough. I can't stop looking at how Silvando runs now. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking earlier that Silvando runs at like a 30 degree angle forward. As soon as he gets to that angle, he just has to keep running from falling over. <laughs> He's walking up that bridge and his like, face is like right next to the ground. <laughs>
We've got a few donations here real quick. Absolutely. We have $5 from Keanu Lookalike, who says $5 dono train for the Puff Puff incentive. We've only got 250 more dollars to go on that, so let's get it done. We've also got $100 from Dodecalope and $100 from an anonymous donor who says, Love what you're doing and appreciate the support for mental health. Good luck and have fun to all the runners. For anyone watching at home, the, uh, the incentive for the Savando gift will be here in maybe about 45 minutes. And the Puff Puff will be about maybe another 30 minutes to 45 minutes after that one. And indeed, Silvando deserves as much for being the MVP of this run. Absolutely. He tanked a nice Kaishin in Slayer of the Sands. We've relied on his hustle and his gold rush. If you'll think not of the runners, think of Silvando. The host has been paying attention to this yeah, run. I forgot about yeah. that Silvando crit on yeah. Slayer of Sands. I completely <laughs> forgot about yeah. it too. I do my homework. <laughs> So Vondo all around is just a useful character in terms of fighting. He can buff with the Oomphal, he can do a lot of damage, and he can heal. So overall, a very well-rounded character. Yeah, it's just that Gold Rush. A lot of the other characters, to do considerable damage, you're hoping for a Sap to land, you're hoping you need them to be oomphed as well. But Savando can just Gold Rush anytime he wants for a guaranteed 300 damage. Assuming you have money to spare. Not expensive to use that at all. It's just a thousand gold. It's expensive when you're playing this casually. I'm a hoarder and I won't spend any of that on attacks. <laughs> gold rush in uh, DQ8 was actually 2,500 each time, right? Yeah, that's pricey. Yeah. Such a happy jump sound. <laughs> so yeah, we're selling the Star of Clarity we picked way back up in Octagonia and equipped on Savando there. It provides a nice, it's a very small defense buff and agility buff, but the main thing is, is it sells for a thousand gold. I think what I really like about these scenarios is that you can explore and do, get so much lore as much as you want, or you can just kind of run through it. So like, as far as the speed run con is concerned, it doesn't add on that much extra time that with a bunch of forced things, but if you, but it's always there if you want to do it. much our end destination is Hado, so we're taking the trip all the way from Gondolia to Hado. It's a real shame that Savando can't get a horse, because since he's the one that comes with the horse hailer. Right. <laughs> Instead, you just gotta run the whole way. You can see the big blue guy off in the distance. That's the boss we're going to fight and that's going to end this scenario. Uh, he, he can be a little dangerous. If you get really unlucky, he can kill Silvando. That's That usually happens if he, uh, he has an AoE attack that can knock you down. It's when that happens and you don't get a chance to recover or heal yourself or anything. You're just kind of at his mercy. That was a nice sizzle crit. Wow. Oh, nice dodge still. Dang, dodge entirely. So with that dodge, it's pretty much certain that Ellie will get through this, taking no damage on that first attack. Good. 
Dang. Nice. <laughs> Both sizzles crit. Interesting. I've never seen that fight where you take zero damage. Yeah, I didn't take any damage, huh? Nice job. Oh. <laughs> you chose correctly. Dragon Quest XI does that classic thing where like half the time, or like 90% of the time for those yes-no options, it starts on yes. But those few times it selects, it selects no, you always press no. Yeah. For Jade scenario, so in the, in the normal game, Jade gets captured and is kind of being held prisoner by the monster Booga. Uh, this is kind of the backstory of how she got captured and stuff. And unfortunately, we do not fight Booga in the speedrun, which is a shame. Before, Booga was actually a very tough boss. So it's, it's bittersweet that we don't fight him. Ellie's gonna be forced into like a like the arena battle, similar to what we did in Octagonia. But something's going on with like the suit she's wearing, and it brings her back to life whenever she dies. So the uh, the three fights that Ellie will be doing are unlosable. So it's just a matter of optimizing in that how fast can you get through them. Jade, as soon as you get the ability to do multi thrust, that's pretty much her strongest ability for the rest of the entire game. So we'll be using multi-thrust and those rock bomb shards that he picked up to do this entire fight and sequence of fights. We're just gonna let show no mercy do the work. The game also knows that multi-thrust is the strongest ability you can do. Yeah, DQ11's AI is very good. Yeah. You're low-key kind of hoping that Jade dies during this fight. So that I guess... No, but you don't need to multi-thrust for the next fight, do you? No. Never mind. Scratch that. want to see the ads doing kebab because it'll it make the fight last a bit longer. See how long we can keep Jade's oomph. Dang, you're like not getting hit. That's wow. crazy. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Never mind. There's a double attack. <laughs> <laughs> the classic. So again, he doesn't he doesn't die, but he loses that buff that he had. Oh, Cinderella. There you go. Hooked me up with another. Ooh, thank you very much. Nice guy. Shin. I think I'm seeing an unreal number of crits in those last two scenarios. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the AI, AI knows how much HP is left. Nice job. Halfway, halfway through the scenarios. Now we got Eric's scenario. Eric's kind of in like a, a dungeon, trying to break his way out. I don't know if we ever, if we know why he got here in the first place, but he's here. You need the uh, mm, guy over there. Oh. Interesting, I didn't even know that was there. So, you call it like an upgraded poison knot? Poison yeah. knot knife. Nope, not today. have some more donations coming in. We've got $11 from Sakul saying, I will not be dissuaded. I must get Melanie in Pokemon. And then in that same vein, we have $233 from Jason LaRose who says, for chaos and Rin. Looks like the mystery dungeon bid wars are starting to heat up just a little bit. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. We have an $11 and 11 cent donation from Vitskin who says, all in on the puff puff train. Choo choo. <laughs> yeah, I've been seeing that puff puff uh, for a long time. Like, I think it's been about six years. <laughs> I'm really aching to see that. Looks like the chat is too. Nice. So here we have a little battle sequence with Eric. Eric has to fight uh, three groups of enemies. Uh, if you die in any of them, you get to take it back to that check or that save point we passed a little earlier. But your little heal slime that's with you casts uh, more heal on you anytime you get a little low at the end of a round. And Ellie has some decent knives equipped so he can put an enemy to sleep and then he has an attack that does high damage to enemies that are sleeping. And all the enemies in this dungeon that you want to fight are all susceptible to sleep. Yeah, you play through this game casually, you're gonna find out that Eric's knife skill, skill tree has the hardest hitting moves in the game. What you would do is you would apply the status effects and then you would use 
for example, Purse Cutter here, uh, and all the uh, status effect moves, because they do three times damage if the status effect is hit. And if you were to like combine that with, let's say, Divide, that's just insane. One more group of enemies. One more enemy to go. Yeah, there's a, a similar uh, thing with poison as well. I think it's called Victimizer. Back in the older versions, that part was not easy. I think thanks to the grind that we did, uh, this makes the scenario much more doable. Yeah, the grind has, definitely has a multi-purpose. You, you get high enough so that Savanda learns Gold Rush. Uh, you definitely want the levels for Hero so that the first few bosses that Hero has to do solo are even remotely doable. Because Hero or some, some of the characters that leave the party come back at a higher level. Hero is whatever level you left him at. And if you don't put enough levels on him, it's going to be very difficult in Act 2. This is a fight that you, you want to die on. I don't even know if... I don't know what happens if you do win, actually. I assume the same thing. Yeah, I assume the same cutscene is going to play. And this one, you just have to survive, like, 14 turns or whatever. And because we're high enough level, Eric's healing that he has applied to him, that little red aura around him, it will always out outpace the damage he's taking. So this fight is free. Just defend your way to the end. One more turn and that's it. So that's the end of Eric's scenario. We have one more scenario where we learn a little bit of what Rab was up to. And then we'll be on to the real act two. So because again, these scenarios were added in the definitive edition. They, uh, these were not present in the, in the base game. It's interesting that even with the extra added content uh, and, and everything, this version is just so much faster than the other versions of the game. It's literally like one third the length of the base PC game. Such a good song. Ooh. We've got a $150 anonymous donation that reads, let's see if I can start a bidding contest. And we here at RPG Limit Break say go for it, because the fun <laughs> thing about a bidding contest is that whoever wins, Nami wins. And when Nami wins, everybody wins. We've also got a $5 donation from Genesic Gunleon, and a $5 donation from Bullet Will, which reads... Oh god, I, I apologize to all the Frenchmen in the chat. Oh, do you want the... are you the... puff puff? <laughs> oh -ho. I like that. I like wearing these masks. I can sneak in little quips here and there, and no one knows who it was. <laughs> so this uh, bunny girl is warping around. Let's see if we can catch her. Oh, if you if you round the the fence line fast enough, you can catch it when she just disappears. The game kind of assumes you're going to be back a little bit, so the wall of the stairwell will be in your way.
それじゃ始めようかねさあかかってきなそこそいねふいとりゃせいほりゃ Ouch. There's a lot of these fights where you're just expected to lose here in a short span. You're just not going to stand a chance against the uh, dual-wielding <laughs> naughty sticks. <laughs> Alright, now to on to the actual Act 2. So this is where the base PC game and PS4 and all those picked up as soon as the Yggdrasil tree fell. Hero is a fish. So, uh, in typical RPG fashion, whenever it's like solo, a solo character, uh, especially when it comes to the speed run, the boss fights and everything that you're going to be dealing with are going to be very tough. And um, the one of the boss fights coming up is a guy named Tyriant, and it is not an easy fight. And we're picking up pretty much everything we can to make that fight a little safer. We got the Devil's Tail we picked up earlier, which reduces shadow damage since a lot of his attacks are shadow based. And we're just gonna stack as much armor as we can afford right now. That specific sword that he just picked up, it, it has a, a percent, a higher percentage because he's like undead or something. Is that correct? I don't think it affects the Giga Slash damage, does it? I am not 100% certain. I wanna say it does. Now I don't know. Because um, otherwise, if you like, just stick with the default sword. I, I do have a feeling it does contribute to the damage, the zombies vein. One little minor benefit of using the uh, during the metal slime fight when we use the hallelujah to um, make the metal slimes uh, both increase experience and drop items. They often drop an item called a magic hat, which is slightly better than the best helmet we have right now. It's a nice little. I mean, it's it's a matter of like three defense points, but it is a little better. And if we're ever on a pinch of gold, those. Those hats are like 5,000 gold. Oh, are they? Yeah. So it could be good backup if you ever need gold. Especially when you hit um, later in the game when you're like or, uh, filling up Serena's d uh, equipment and stuff. Oh, you got the worst hook location. <laughs> the, the hook placement once you enter this area is random. There's like seven different locations it can be, and this is the worst one because it's so far away. And if you take too long to get to it, it can move and go into a different spot. One hundred more dollars for the world's best Puff Puff incentive, courtesy of Snapadin, whose message reads only Puff Puff. Nice. How far away are we at from that incentive? We are one hundred fifty dollars away. Okay. So we're about... Maybe about 20 minutes from Silvando's story, or for his little cutscene incentive. And maybe about an hour from the Puff Puff. Roger that. Valley's adjusting skills right now to get a strength plus 25 skill, which will uh, greatly increase the Giga Slash damage. It's always interesting, like, uh, you, when I see these skill trees, I think it's gonna, your skills have to kind of branch out from the beginning. But the way we manipulate it, we just have, like, three isolated skills at the top that give us the biggest benefit, so we don't have to waste points where we don't actually get a big contribution. Frankly, it also makes it easier to menu in battle, because you don't have so many, like, random skills that you're not gonna use. Yeah. Just sitting around doing nothing. 
It's also how we get Gold Rush at this level. The Gold Rush skill and the skills around it are very expensive. And uh, right now, Savando only has like four skills that are all at the bottom of the tree. Yeah, I think it's pretty awesome, the fact that you can bridge the skills to get to another tree and then respec yourself enough skill points. Yeah. Good old Sandy. So heroes head, we're heading back to Heroes' hometown. Um, get to see what the current st you're, when you're playing casually, you don't know what, where if you're if you're like your mom's here, if, you're, if your family and friends are still around. So this is kind of a cool cool part in the story where you kind of find out what's going on now. He's gonna stop by here and pick up another shield. Very close, I need 5,000 almost there. Rip seeds. <laughs> there we go. I guess I used too many gold rushes. Sorry about that. The bunny route is just a little bit tight. Nice thing about the magic shield that we bought there, it gives us magic resistance to uh, to spells. A lot of enemies in Act 2 use a lot of spells. So with the magic shield and the devil's tail, we're going to have some good defense against the shadow, shadow attacks. So here's where you find out that Hendrik, who was kind of an enemy in Act 1, has kind of realized that he was on the wrong side to start with, and he's trying to, like, correct his wrongs. Also, that's not the king anymore. Yeah. It's the king. But yeah, in Act 1, the king is actually, like, possessed. hear the sound details through the headphones. You really can. <laughs> oh, if you guess. So Hendrick, Hendrick is in the party right now, but he's gonna, he kind of does his own thing. And, um... You're kind of hoping that Hendrik targets the main main guy, because all the other guys will die in either two or three Giga Slashes. The main one takes like five. The, the ones on the side will die anyway. Nice. Forbearance is a nice, one of the nicer moves that Hendrik can do. It uh, draws all attack towards him. It basically makes cancels out the next round of attacks for the enemy. Especially for the Tyrion fight, that can be invaluable if he does it at the right time. <laughs> What's great about Giga Slash is that not only is it an AoE, but it's unblockable. And this is our, with Hero being underleveled the way he is, this is our go to 
damage move. Alright, so now we're all done in this town, we can leave. We're heading to, uh... This place, this town just keeps getting raided by, uh... Like the, a monster that's... Take, that's kind of taken over the castle nearby. You're gonna have to sneak into the castle to back route and take care of that monster so this town stops getting raided. There, there, there's just some interesting tech in the next dungeon. So, in the next dungeon, there's a group of enemies that kind of, like, follow each other in a line. A little bit of a train situation. And they keep moving when you're opening, like, items and inventory and stuff. So, some inventory management, we wait and to do right then. So that the enemies keep moving. And they're out of the way by the time we're done uh, messing with the inventory. One of those few times where it's... But it's actually not a time loss or anything to mess with your inventory. That shopping there, I bought some panaceas, which would be like the next upgrade to strong medicine. They're very strong, they heal about 100 HP, and they can also get rid of some status effects. And you bought nine? I didn't actually know you bought that many. Oh yeah. I buy, don't buy any for this fight in my normal route, but I like buying more safety <laughs> items for yeah, this it's, fight. it's definitely for safety, for sure. I usually just live with the uh, Lunaria that I pick up in the Yggdrasil tree, mm -hmm. and that one perfect panacea you get. And then the Yggdrasil do, if needed. All right, so now this is actually where, uh, at the very beginning of the game, we were getting chased out by the dragon. We come out through this path. So now we're going back in, the back way. So it's, the, it's actually the same sewers that we wandered through with Eric earlier in the game. Would have loved to have the dragon be an incentive, but I think he's just a bit too powerful at our <laughs> Oh, level. to do him right now? Yeah. Have you ever tried him at these levels? Let's say that I have. Those armor hitboxes can be a pain. And sometimes if that soldier's in a bad part of his movement pattern, you can actually stick to the wall and like open your map. And he'll walk right by you, not actually aggro while you have the map open. Most DQ9 esque. It's a little map, map manipulation here and there. <laughs> Never hurt anyone. Sometimes those hocus pocus enemies are also a pain. 
some room. Yeah, and they're like the torches stick out just enough so that if you're trying to get around them, you get stuck in the torch and there's just enough time for them to catch you. Interesting strategy here. It's just faster to zoom back to the castle that you now have as, as a zoom point. Alright, so now we have the Tyrion boss coming up. Tyrion is one of the scarier bosses in the run. Uh, we're relying on Tyrion targeting Hendrik as often as possible. And good Giga Slash damage rolls whenever Tyrion summons his shadow to get rid of it as fast as possible. Also, another scary thing is when the shadow casts Oomphal on the main one. Thankfully, it, there's, it's not very punishing. If you do die, it just takes you right back here. We're also hoping that Hendrik does some forbearance and, you know, can help out Hero as much as possible in it. Yeah. So Tyrion has 2,000 health to give you an idea of how much you have to do right here. But Ellie got the... Nice. has the, got a buff. Strength plus, uh, the plus 25 to strength ability, or, uh, in the skill tree. And that's gonna make his Giga Slash damage rolls a little bit higher. Probably about 20 to 30 points higher than they would be otherwise. Now, uh, Tyrion is scripted. We can kind of use that to our advantage. But even though we do know his moves, that doesn't... Still very tough. And he will also alternate between doing one attack and two attacks. So if you're getting a little low on HP, and all you have to do is think back to how many attacks he did in the previous turn to know if, how safe you are. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm gonna have to go here. Oh, and he got the Oomphal off. Darn. That mid heal's nice, so now... Oof. I know he's going to do a one one turn, so it's not going to kill me. So yeah, getting rid of that shadow is always a priority. The shadows have 280 health. So getting that strength plus 25 pretty much guarantees that the shadow will die in two Giga Slashes, which is... Oh! Probably going to do one extra Panacea here to... Nice. And then the third time Tyrion does Zamel is that you can predict he's about to summon his shadow and they're going to pep together. So when you when he sees that third Zamel come out, you'll see him defend. Ooh, that was a nice roll. Yep, got to defend here. The getting that heal is also nice. He was a little little low. Oh, Shadow didn't pep up right away. I'm not sure why. Maybe you killed the shadow faster in the first part. Went on Hendrik, which is nice. See, and it's this situation where it just can, it can get frustrating when the shadow's alive and they just keep targeting you and you have to keep healing. And all you want to do is just do another Giga Slash. Hendrik had a timely forbearance there, so it'll help me get a, at least a Giga Slash in. Okay, thanks, Hendrik. He shouldn't be doing 200 damage with two moves there. Oh, nice crit. <laughs> wow. wow. Hendrik, perfect. Hendrik, please magic water. Oh, come on. Oh, that oh, works too. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that was a great fight. I was going to say. Wow, some of those damage rolls were insane. They were awesome. I don't really see 360 from a Giga Slash. Right. It's, it's been interesting coming together and, and working through this route. Like, I, I'd never heard of using this uh, learning, putting Strength Plus 25 skill on Hero for that fight. And it's it's a huge impact on, on that fight, making it safer. I will forever be doing that from now on. Gentlemen, I bring good news. I like good news. On behalf of a $150 donation from Tanuki Monster, we have reached the world's best Puff Puff incentive. Nice. 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 Their message reads, in memory of the friends I have lost and in honor of those who continue to brave the challenges of mental illness. <laughs> Loving this Dragon Quest XI run, such a beautiful game and a masterful job by the runners. 
We're also getting closer on Silvando's stinking gift. A $120 donation has put the total up to 300 of the 500 needed. We've got, I'd say, what is it, 10 or so minutes left on Probably that? Probably a good, mm, yeah, 10, 10, 15 minutes. Okay. Let's make our boy proud, folks. Uh, at least one of the best cutscenes we're going to at least see in this I know. one. <laughs> Oh, forgot to mention, we also got a $15 donation from Hatman, who says, Always glad to see RPG Limit break in action. Sad I couldn't make it this year as I had planned to back in 2020, and, well, you know. Here's 15 smackaroos for now, because our runners deserve the best, and thus only the world's best puff puff will do. Thanks, Batman. So Hendrik is going to become our main damage dealer until we get Eric. And uh, we learn some skills. We get Double Up, which allows him to increase his own offense. And Unbridled Blade, which is probably his best attack he, you can get access to for Hendrik. So this area of the game is actually the part you go in with Eric earlier in the game, but it's a different part of it. It's it's really interesting how they use the map in this game to, like, there are inex inaccessible places earlier that you use later. Well, just a, just ahead of you on the left. So in the very beginning of the game, you went across a bridge and you had to like uh, talk to the old man who was, who was as a dog at the time, and you can look off into the valley and you see some really difficult monsters down there, some really big guys. Yeah. And uh, you're just like, I wonder when I'm going to get down there. And you finish Act 2, and it's like, oh, yeah, I still haven't been down there. Yeah. You don't actually go down there until Act 3. But it's, it's cool that, like, those guys are already there, and you're kind of getting little glimpses of what you'll be doing in the future. And all these, like, little checkpoints in Act 1 have, like, guards posted at them, and they're not letting you through. That's basically what's why you can't get through. So yeah, we're coming over here real fast just to get... When you check the campsite, you get it as a zoom location. So it's, it's the same situation as like earlier in the run when we stopped by Octagonia. We just... We need to come here anyway, but we have to go way further out of the way in a different direction afterward. So we just pick that up and then go where we want it to go anyway, so we can zoom back quickly. I never noticed that mountain in the distance up there. <laughs> Is that where we're going? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah I never noticed that. Yeah, in Act 1, that part is blocked by the fence through the gate. Now we have it open. If I didn't grab that return point, the walk back here <laughs> It's not, it wouldn't be fun. These dragons are obnoxious. Sometimes they're just facing the wrong way. They just... And we have to fight a different dragon fight, but these, this one's not shiny, so it's not a mountable enemy. I'm not exactly sure how the flea logic works in the game. It seems like by the third round, you have almost a guaranteed run chance. But by the fourth round, it is guaranteed. At least I assume how that's how it works, because I've never not been able to run by the fourth time. To me, it almost feels like 25, 25, 25, and then guaranteed. But to Andy's point, it's just ridiculously hard to run away. One of the scarier fights to run away from is the... If you're not doing glitched, it's like the tentacular-looking enemies. Uh, you get, like, you fail to run two or three, two times, and you're probably going to wipe. Yeah, so, when, so, when so you're many, on the boat. So, yeah. so many situations, so many 
bad situations that were avoided with all these with this route that I'm grateful for. <laughs> Ellie's going to pick up a, uh, a recipe book right now, which has recipes for uh, a really nice greatsword and regular sword. We'll be making two greatswords for uh, Hero and Hendrik somewhere along the way, and uh, the sword for Eric. It's a very critical recipe book. Getting closer on Silvando's stinking gift. We've got a $50 anonymous donation and then a $5 from Corny Cecil Morty, who says, Oh, darlings, it wouldn't be a valid Dragon Quest XI run without our best boy Silvando getting his present, would it? I have no idea if that's what he sounds like. Poppy would be so sad if we didn't reach this incentive. We're about $100 away, from what I can tell. We are aware of an issue affecting our tracker with regard to incentives. We're working on that and we'll have it sorted out as soon as we can. Here you're kind of learning a little bit what what Rab was up to. You kind of find out that Rab was here, and that Rab is up on a mountain nearby. And you go to find him, and Rab is. I'm not exactly sure. I guess in in this world, Rab is dead, and he's dealing with some stuff in like an alternate reality. Man, I forgot how they explained it, but it is pretty much what you're talking about. Another reality, yeah, type thing. And you actually have to go, so you have to go fight him with Hero. And uh, it is not a simple fight. Uh, Rab is very strong. He has a move called Pearly Gates, which does a lot of damage. Thankfully, it is a scripted fight. Well, the, the main Rab, Rab can summon little clones of himself that are not scripted. And if those non-scripted enemies don't cooperate, it can, it can kill you. But we should be fine. Dragon's not too much way there. That's hell. And again, just fighting this guy because we have to mount him and uh, use him to scale this cave right here. So you find Rab, and it's just kind of like a very frail body right now, and the real Rab is in this alternate reality we were talking about. So. The Void. Uh. So an interesting strategy for this fight is we actually use Rab's item against himself. So in Act 1, we moved Rab's cane, his own weapon, onto Hero. And if you use the cane as an item, it basically casts the equivalent of like regen on yourself. A very a very gradual heal heals you for like 10 points every turn. And that 10 points of healing is the difference between dying and not dying in this fight.
Nice. You, if you get really unlucky, the Giga Slash might not kill one of the shadows. And that's when things get a little tricky because the shadow gets another turn. Pearly Gates are doing a lot of damage. So now we're to the point where it's just Quadra Slash from here on out. So Rab has one more Pearly Gates in him, and then it just depends on what these shadows do. And my, my HP is actually higher than normal, so I'm going to have to live 60 HP or so. Oh, no. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> Thank so you close. very much. Thank you, thank you for not doing magic. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, one of the shadows did Zam. The other one had done either Crackle or Zam. He dies. Man, that takes guts to not heal there. <laughs> that takes so much. The thing is, if you heal, then the shadows are just going to act again. So it's right. just kind of... The, the, the route is kind of like optimized so that if you don't win on that turn, you're not going to win. All right, Rab's back to the group. Okay, we have about five-ish minutes before the Silvando cutscene. We're about $65 out from that at the moment. I will keep you posted. Almost there, guys. You won't be disappointed. So now we're heading to a town that we've never seen before because we skipped so much of Act 1. A town called uh, Phenomenon. And it's where Silvando is based in Act 2. I just saw the tracker tick up. Is that good news? Well, wouldn't you know it? I just got a donation <laughs> for $65. Nice. With the message being, please keep the runners posted. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jim B. With that, we meet Silvando's stinking gift incentive. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. We've nice. also received a $15 donation from Zetair, who says, always happy to support RPG Limit Break and Nami. Good luck to all the runners. Just in time for that cutscene, yeah, because we're about maybe two minutes away from it. I do love good news. <laughs> <laughs> so here, Hero gets a nice little outfit because we met up with Silvando. It's a great outfit. I love the, the whole dancing thing, but Hero moves at like 5% speed while you're wearing it. So <laughs> unfortunately not feasible for the speed run. At least we'll still keep the suit. Oh, interesting. The horse respawns behind you after that. Yeah. Does that make it faster to go grab the horse? Just a couple seconds. I did not know that. <laughs> My gold is a little bit tight. I just need 20,000 gold. Um, but selling... Hendrix action. Yep. We don't have to craft both pieces right now. You only need to craft one of that, them at the moment. That is true, yeah. But I think you're going to get there anyway. Yep. So 
been a while since we last came into the forge, so we get to find out all the skills we've learned in the meantime. Failed. Failure. Hero looks so sad when he fails. It's kind of like the sad <laughs> me when, when back in the Wii Sports. I just wish there were a friendlier way of saying you didn't do too good instead of just failure. <laughs> Did you go ahead and equip that sword on Hero now? Yep. Interesting. I think also the Worm Fang has a property. It does extra damage to... Is it? I think it's Beasts. Alright, so we have the Savano cutscene right now. In just, a few, in just a couple seconds. So don't skip that one. Don't skip that one. Right. Hand, hands off the... Yeah, hands, hands, <laughs> hands off the, the... It's, it's so easy to just to get into the habit of... You're so used to it, yeah. All right, this yeah, we can Yeah, you can skip. skip that one. All right, my friends, please enjoy. This one. Avrath is such a good character. ただで返してもらえると思ったらそうは問屋がおろしませんあなたの一番大切な人をくださればお恨人を解放しましょう悪い話ではないと思いますがいかがですかその必要はないわこれ以上<笑><笑><笑> あなたに大切なものを失わせはしないわ。ここは私の出番。私がずっとずっと。Soft, <laughs> warm, and fragrant. とっても大切なもの。このままのにあげるわ。人間にしては物分かりが良くて助かりますよ。では早速いただきましょうか。<laughs> はい、これ大切に使ってね。おお、どれどれ？おおなんとかわしい香り。ここれは馬の糞じゃないですか？ <laughs> Got him. I love that monocle. The voice actor for Avrith is so good. Yeah. Sounds 
song is good. I love this song. Teravrith is a pretty straightforward boss. There's a lot of bosses in Act 2 that are very scary. Avrith is not really one of them. Really, the only variance is just if he, who he puts to sleep and how many people he manages to put to sleep. See, that double, the double up move that Hendrik now has that we taught him uh, raises his attack at the cost of lowering his defense a little bit. Oh, nice. 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 Rad's a little low right now, but I, I think it's, there's no real, even if he dies, that's not a big deal. Oof. That sucks, actually. Uh, just gonna pearl your gates. Oh. I this close. Not... There it is. There. Nice. Took another round or two than necessary, but... Rad like really it. came through on that one. It's always disappointing when someone takes their action and is asleep, and then Sylvando wakes him up. Yeah, thanks for make, meeting that incentive, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that. We do have a fix on the way for our little tracker hiccup. We are going to reset the tracker to do that, so we ask everyone in watching to hold off on their donations for just a little bit. We'll let you know when it's back online. I'm gonna do a quick mountain of stairs to climb. These are the stairs I was talking about earlier, where uh, before sprint was a thing, they took a long time. <laughs> and you do them about seven times. You have, to do, you have to do a bunch in Act 1. Yeah. <coughs> Those are good times. Yeah. Or the glitch. Yeah. The PS4 days. So now we've already filled our party back up to four people. Next person we'll be getting is Eric, I believe. Yep. And that was pretty much the last easy boss of the game. There's one more, but everyone else is pretty much a very difficult anything can happen boss. Well, not anything, but bad things can happen boss. In other words, the relaxing part of the run is over. <laughs> <laughs> act two, almost in a sense, is the is a boss rush act. Yeah. If we do a lot of, a lot of menuing, um, a lot of do the glitch setup in Act one, and then Act two is a lot of uh, tactical fighting strategy. So here, uh, Silvando's gonna meet up with his dad, who is kind of like this gruff ruler of this town, and uh, learns to accept accept his son for who he is.
Have you ever had a counter for how many times you've jumped after a cutscene when you've been <laughs> pressing cancel? Because, I mean, that would be a really fun counter for me. a good one. Me. Like, some people will do, like, in, like, uh, FF7, for example, to do, like, number of random battles they've encountered. Right. Dragon Quest, how many jumps after dialogue. That'd be very interesting to see, like, your, like, an average amount of jumps <laughs> right. <for a> run. <laughs> I know personally, if I was doing it, it'd probably be like a hundred, just because it, easily. <laughs> so now Savando's dad is dressed like Savando. So now Silvando officially joins the group. He was kind of just like accompanying us, but now he fully commits to joining us. And we get the horse hailer back. Yeah, we're just going to dump a bunch of skills on him. There's no like particular skills we need. It's mostly just uh, learning charm plus skills to raise his healing abilities. We're also stacking agility on um, on Silvando. We ideally want him to go first. Yeah, Silvando is a great support character, like one of the best support characters in the frame, in the series, really. Um, and to have both Oomphal and a healing spell is amazing. And the gold rush for all these random encounters. <laughs> So heading back out to the open sea, we're going to stop by Strand and lie to Michelle, which is what the game expects you to do in Act 1. And um, this has an interesting side effect of... I think this is when you get the Lorelei's Harp, right? Yep. And Lorelei's Harp, sometimes we've been uh, going around the ocean and you've seen little like sparkling or the uh, shimmers of light in the water, like uh, pillars of light. Uh, if you use Lorelei's harp, that acts as like a warp to go underwater and take you to a different one. And normally you would be taking one kind of nearby here to get to the inland and you would take you to Phnom Non. But because we never took that, uh, we'll be taking a different warp that usually is preempted by a big boss fight. But I guess because that we've never taken a warp before, uh, the game skips that boss fight and we're able to avoid that boss fight entirely even though we're going right to where it should be. So my, my only guess is the game is scripted somehow to uh, turn off encounters for a period of time. I'm not sure. Hey, there's that enemy you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Wow. Great run. Nice. I was worried because I was fully healed there. Thank you, uh, RG. <laughs> <laughs> Ideally, I would like some more killable enemies because the goal is to have Savon to be, be level 39 after the next boss fight. What does that get you? Uh, Oomphal. Oh, that's right. Oh, is that to make up for skipping the other bosses? Yeah, he's usually just short of level 39. Yeah. So yeah, this Pillar of Light, usually there's a big boss fight as soon as you get here. But I guess because we've never taken a pillar before, we don't have to take that fight. Another side effect is uh, here in Sniffelheim, if you notice as he's going through these doors, a little arrow appears as if the doors are present and uh, like, hero should be opening the doors or something. It's because Sniffelheim is in kind of an odd state right now because the game is still like half set up for Sniffelheim in Act 1. All these characters should not be here right now in, in the castle. They're all supposed to be gone. And uh, 
Right, they're all supposed to be frozen right now. So you're kind of like in a half mix of Stiffelheim for Act 1 and then Stiffelheim in Act 2. So there will be parts where we actually are able to walk through some of the doors that are closed as if they don't as if they aren't there. It's just kind of a wonky setup. I don't know how everything sticks together and doesn't fall apart or crash or something while we're here. Yep. <laughs> How'd I do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you didn't notice all the yellow floating arrows or like random people, you'd noticed when you started walking through doors. Yeah. Yeah. Just wanted to say that we have rebooted the tracker. We're still working on the issues here, but we are seeing donations coming through again. <laughs> Speaking of, we have an anonymous five and twenty dollar donation. We have a one hundred dollar donation from BD Jeffy P, who says mental health is so important in this day and age. Let's keep raising awareness and getting resources to all who need it. A five dollar donation then from Only Birds, which reads Puff Puff. So many big attacks for this fight and the upcoming one that the sounds just like start stacking on top of each other. It gets a little ridiculous. It's just like a massive sound. So here, this whole sequence is like following up with Eric. Eric trying to uh, during his his uh, his scenario, he kind of like sacrifices memories for his life. And here, this is him, like, slowly regaining his memories as he comes through here. And part of that is, in the next dungeon, he kind of, like, learns... A, you learn a little bit of the history of Eric's sister. Which is also the next boss. So we're gonna respec hero, get rid of we're no longer gonna use Giga Slash or any of that, we're gonna respec him into Great Swords. So he essentially becomes the same character as Hendrick. That was really loud, <laughs> randomly. <laughs> By gold with gold. Yeah, it's like as soon as like Quadra Slash and Pearly Gates all coming out, it's just like a barrage of noise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's still going. No, no, you go ahead. Nope, you. No, no, my... Nope. Mm -mm. Okay. Well, I mean, I was going to talk about the next dungeon. <laughs> go so, for it, yeah. Uh, I was just going to say, it's one of... <laughs> to me, it's like one of the coolest dungeons. Like, I just... I love how everything is gold, all the the themed uh, enemies in there, and just a couple random things that they... Like, the casino stuff, the, the, key, the slot machines, like, that enemy. Like, it's just... It's just pretty cool. But, yeah, what were you going to say? Uh, it was along, along that same vein. This is actually the first dungeon I I, real, I found out that uh, Electrolyte cannot be cast anywhere. If you try and cast Electrolyte in this next dungeon, it won't let you because it says there's not enough space. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, interesting. 
That's fun. Very cool. Yeah, those casino monsters. I don't. Those are pretty unique. Are they in other? I, I think I think they're just in BQ11. So yeah, this dungeon is just kind of a little bit of maze. There's a bunch of doors, and they're all just locked from one side. So you kind of have to work your way around to the other side of the door via very long paths. I want to say uh, in the post game of this, there there's another version of this that is kind of like the opposite direction or something. But I don't want to say for sure. But it's it. I always like going through that too. It just it seems like an awesome maze. It, it's been so long since I played this casually. I, I definitely need to play it again. Like I played this game casually like when it came out like five years ago. Right. And I put like four times as much time into it, learning the speed run. Right. <laughs> you definitely forget the details. Oh. Uh, couldn't squeeze to the right. Only end. one, though. Interesting. Fourth run should be guaranteed. Hero's defense seems really good. All right, so coming up is the Gildiga fight, which, I mean, has the chance to go south really fast. The main thing is, so Gildiga has a, a move that turns two of your party members into gold for... However many turns it lasts. Sometimes it lasts longer than others. And uh, he, the other scary attack is uh, he does he has a single target attack, which does a lot of damage. <laughs> Casting Boulderbringer with Eric just to keep like the the damage constantly rolling. That'll do about 50 damage every turn. Unfortunately, Savando does not know Oomphal. I really need that staff from Grab. There we go. Nice. Sap landed. That's awesome. Oh, but he got Hendrick. Hope many attacks, Rab. So yeah, Hendrik, it's unfortunate Hendrik gets frozen or golden because Hendrik is the damage dealer for this fight. Rab survives that attack, thankfully, because he was defending. Hendrik back reasonably quick. Oh, wow. So Rob going down is bad, but it's not awful. It's definitely better than like your damage dealers going down. Hopefully Savanna comes back and Savanna will become the new healer. You lose gold rush, but better than dying. Gildia is almost dead, you can tell because the name is now orange. I think that means he's like 20% or so from death. Oh, very close. All right. Wow, this everyone's so fine. low. This is fine. A gold rush from Silvando might finish it. It's a gamble. Typical. The hero. <laughs> nice job. Well done. Yeah. Ellie definitely wants to keep Silvando alive for that fight, because now Silvando knows Umphal, which is a basically attack up by two, which is huge for being able to buff Eric in one go. 
Don't worry about the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Side effect of still like the weird Act 1 and Act 2 weirdness. We've got a $5 donation from Drumboardist, who says, Hey ya, Andy. Hey ya, Ellie. Good luck with ye old Dragon Quest 11 and S. I just wanted to donate to make sure the tracker was working, and also to give my blessings to this run, so good luck. We're all counting on you. Ah, oh, yes, I had the lasagna. Donation goes to either Andy or Ellie's choice, but who gets to pick will be decided by one round of rock, paper, scissors. Runners approve. Sounds good to me. I'll let you finish the skills. Okay. Almost forgot to make the uh Eric sword. So Eric becomes the main damage dealer from here on out. His uh, divide move basically makes the next attack 3x'd. And his fatal flash move is extremely powerful. It can do upwards of six to 700 damage per attack, so it can do like 1,500 to 2,000 damage in a single attack. All right, you ready for that rock, paper, scissors? Okay, rock, paper, scissors, shoot. One. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. <sighs> ah, it's Ellie. Right. Ellie wins, then. Your choice? Um, You said any incentive? Yeah. Uh, it, what are the incentives for uh, Dragon Quest 2? <laughs> well, let me see. Here. You're going deep into the week. Huh. Starting, starting those sentences early. For Dragon Warrior 2, you can name the Prince of Canoc, you can name the Prince of Loresia, and you can name the Princess of Moonbrook. We'll go with, uh, let's name Moonbrook uh, Nami. Perfect. So swapping to 2D to 3, back to back and forth here has an interesting side effect. It actually results in you getting to, or it advances you to a further in the in the map, so it gets you closer to the next boss fight, and it adds Jade back into your party, even though we never got Jade. Oh, we get your cute outfit again. Even though we never got Jade, the game assumes that you're at this chapter, you probably have Jade. So here we are. Another super scary boss fight incoming. So yeah, we're going to start start an interesting strategy here where you oomphal Eric and, and divide him and then take him out of the party so that he doesn't get debuffed or frozen or anything. So as Eric will divide, Sylvando will oomphal him, and then we'll swap him out. Oh, he doesn't have oomphal yet. Interesting. Oh, he must have been uh, just a couple experience short, but he should be on Hopefully the sap lands. Nice. Oh, I don't think I can swap out people who are down. I think you can. Can you not? Oh, oh man. I oh. guess Eric will be coming in later. Once someone is back, or once Jade comes back this up or something. This is actually kind of scary. I don't have any healers. Okay, that works. Yeah, Hendrick is really nice because with his double up move, it basically means he can prepare himself. He doesn't have to rely on anybody else to get ready for his attacks. Yeah, just eke out that 300 damage from that multi-thrust and then bring Eric back in. Eric still maintains all of his buffs that he had previously. So he'll be able to Fatal Flash and hit for probably 1,600 damage or so. Actually, it was a little low because of this, because of the lack of oomphal, unfortunately. Oh. Hendrik was my main damage dealer. Before it came up. 
Every time you swap back and forth between 3D and 2D mode, the game assumes, like, resets all your tutorial status and stuff, so... You get pepped again? Here's how pep works! Oh, really? Uh, that's unfortunate, Eric. It's a turn loss. So this is a fight that's dragging, but thankfully no one is dying. Yeah, Hendrix's been doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Yeah, low enough that really no nice. point in waiting, dividing yeah. beforehand. So not a clean fight, but not a nobody died. So, and you got him full. And sometimes if a character dies for, like, one boss fight, that can often snowball into... That means they'll, they're low experience, so they'll die for the next one, the next one, the next one. Having everyone consistently alive is really good. Yeah, more stats to live through the final boss rush. <laughs> Platinum War. I don't know if I've ever gotten that from that. <laughs> it's cute if you, like, turn the this big bouncy thing around, the Ego Skeleton or whatever it is. You can actually see, like, Hero inside the little window and the controls. Oh, goodness. I have another $10 from Drumboardist. <laughs> Who says, now, now, gang, I said the winner of one round of rock, paper, scissors. I'm guessing he wasn't happy that you tied the first time. Seeing as how the rules weren't observed, here's $10 for Andy's decision. Go Astros. <laughs> Ooh. You just won my favor with that with that donation comment there at the end. Uh, what is the next non-bid war incentive for, like, the next game? Well, let me see here. That would be the Purity Forest Exhibition for Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Let's do that. Perfect. <laughs> We've also got an anonymous $20 donation and Fell Sorcerer donating $10, who says, Good luck to Ellie on the run. Nice kaishin no ichigeki. <laughs> What does that full expression mean? Uh, I'm guessing just critical hit or something. Yep. It's uh, you la landing an excellent hit. Ah. Oh. How, how, what is it, how does it exactly does it go? Nice. Kaishin no Ichigaki. Kaishin no Ichiga? Kaishin no Ichigaki. Kaishin no Ichiga. Yes. So we hit a really sad point in the story right here. Thankfully, though, if, if you're like interested in the story, this is one where like where you're skipping all the cutscenes. You don't actually know what just happened and why it's a sad point. So, if I may, on the subject of later incentives, we've got plenty of RPG goodness left throughout this entire week. If you're curious about what's coming next. The next run on our schedule is Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team, any percent no wonder mail, brought to you by Lycanu. Then after that, Reverb brings you Kodelka, any percent, the spiritual predecessor to the Shadow Hearts series. We're also making good progress on Monday's incentives. We have already raised 600 of $1,000 needed for a most noble cause, killing Lord British in <laughs> Ultima 4, on behalf of an anonymous $500 donation. Nice. That's awesome. I'm excited for that run.
So the enchanting echo skill that he just learned right there, it basically means whenever Serena casts a spell, there's a, a small chance that Serena will cast it twice. So maybe she'll cast a sap, it like it lands twice. She could uh, double blunt, she could double heal. Um, all very beneficial, except especially in the final boss rush. Yeah, the double multi-heal is can just be... It can save your, your whole run, really. Oh, yeah. This next, uh, this area and the next combined are probably the biggest benefiters of cutscene skips. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Without cutscene skipping, this and the next area are probably going to take you about 30 to 45 minutes. Got to check the front thing first. I hate that. <laughs> I always make that mistake. Just want to rush to the flower. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of this stuff is a lot of filler. At one point, they do talk. They do make a reference to the post game. So this is all talking about like the the different elements that kind of go into the the sword that you need to use to break into the fortress to fight the final boss. And this is where you like you're discovering. Oh, there's a piece in Galopolis that I need to get. There's a piece in Hado. And you kind of make your rounds to get everything. And a piece in the the battlegrounds. Interestingly enough, are now all accessible, <laughs> as you just miraculously le learned to zoom back there. Technically, you could probably also get back there with the whale you now have access to. Which I attest is the same whale from Link's Awakening. It looks exactly the same, like the same model and everything, it's the same design. The windfish. Yeah. Yeah, one hundred percent. But here, Galopolis is a strange color because there's a giant globe in the sky called Erdrich's Lantern that is threatening to fall and crush the city, and everyone's sad. We're sad, obviously, but distraught about it and you're going to go take care of it. You can finish this in 47 minutes. I think so. Nice. With the puff puff? Puff puff cutscene doesn't last super long. Right. But it's nice to sit and dwell on it. <laughs> <laughs> And this is where you get like the first uh, notion that there's something greater at work here. At this little black toggle. Won't go into detail about it because we won't. We don't actually do the Act Three where that comes into play. The thing we're grabbing from Galopolis is the hammer. I think it's like one of their royal treasures. Thank goodness they didn't sell it this time. <laughs> if they if they created another fetch quest, I mean, that went across continents again, man. So yeah, we're already done here in Galopolis. Now we're gonna go to the battlegrounds, 
and get the Orichalcum, which is kind of like the mineral that you use to forge the, the sword. But more importantly, it's also the location of the greatest Puff Puff. And that incentive was met, right? The That Puff Puff? Yes, it was. Awesome. So this battleground is like a site of like an ancient war. And that's why there's still like lots of enemies milling about. It's also where Hero can jump about 500 feet down and land without incident. Nice landing. is just right around the corner. I don't know who keeps these torches still lit down here. All right, here's the greatest puff puff. It's also quick. <laughs> she runs off. That's right, we gotta follow her. stunned. <laughs> I forgot about this music. I in Japanese before. Me neither. <laughs> That's why I was like, <laughs> I was not expecting that at all. <laughs> if you could believe it, we've got another five dollar donation. Guess who it's from? I bet. I, I bet I can guess. <laughs> what, do, what do you need now, Drum? One more time, <laughs> as I straight up didn't realize that the first rock paper scissors throw was a tie. My apologies, as I assumed it was a loss, followed by Andy winning. <laughs> That's on me. I didn't pay attention. And this is why I'm not good at RPGs like Earthbound Rando, which Andy will be doing tomorrow. <sighs> so to make up for it, here's the five bucks I essentially shafted Eli. Toss it toward what he rightfully won. I, now, thought, he, I thought he was just getting really technical in the fact that we tied and we should have ended it there and split it or something. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now that all is right with the world, I shall sit back and watch the sun rise on a grateful universe that is now balanced, as all things should be. <laughs> Except RPGs, because they have RNG, and we don't like that around these here parts. Thanks, Drum. <laughs> All right, so we got the second piece that we need for the sword. Now we go on to Hado to... I forget what piece is actually here. We're, we want yeah, access to the Crucible. Oh, that's right. We already have all the pieces. We just need to get to the... Yeah. But before it'll give us access to that, we have to take care of, uh, like, the mayor, the mayor-esque person. They got a little problem on their hands. And it's that their brother... Has been turned into a dragon, is terrorizing the town. And they don't know whether to kill the dragon or try to figure out how to save it. There's the Gigantes. Nice. They just look so happy. Also, I like the monsters with the drums that have like their friends that follow them around. I thought that, I like how like Dragon Quest XI has created like groups of enemies to be like uh -huh. to be doing things together. Social, Rather, yeah. yeah, they're they're exactly they're social. They're not just like randomly stalking one area waiting for someone to come so they can attack them, but they're actually like living. I think that's cool. It's details. Yeah. All right, so here we got a little hideout where some of these people are hiding. They kind of got run out of town. And by taking a back entrance in the back of this hideout, you can kind of lean over and get it. You get it for your first glimpse of the dragon that's terrorizing the town, Tatsunaga. So you actually have to fight Tatsunaga twice. And the first time is pretty much free. Uh, he only attacks twice, is in a little weaker. The second time, Tatsunaga is stronger and gets three turns per attack. And uh, Tatsunaga can easily decide to attack the people you don't want him to and ruin things. Have I got time? for one more donation real quick. Yeah, we have a boss fight in like 30 seconds, so you got until then. Radical Edward donates $100 and says, Hello all. I wanted to watch some RPG speedruns, and luckily RPG Limit Break is here, and for such a great and personal charity to me. Best of luck to all the runners this week, and thank you to all of the staff. Donation goes to Announcer's Choice. Ooh. Ooh, I, I'm honored. I'll have to think on that. Oh, you can zoom back to Hado once you're up here? Yep. Okay, I just did a little bit too early. Oh, I didn't know that. I just ran, I always ran back down. You got all those, like, two to three second optimizations. Yeah, just, a little, just some little time <laughs> saves here and there. Like how he's always still looking the wrong way, expecting you to come down the stairs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take a few more turns than expected. Oh, nice. An echo right away. So that's the easy ver version of Tatsunaga. We immediately go into a cave and fight the harder version. And Tatsunaga is stronger and gets three attacks per action. And he has a different ad additional moves he can do. And one of his worst ones that he can do is he knocks down the party. Just sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. 
Yeah, and Eric getting knocked down is basically as bad as waves of ice um, because like you're constantly setting him up. You're dividing him and letting, so it's like a two, two part attack. And if he gets knocked down, then he has to start over with the first part again. So this is pretty much the last dungeon before the final area. Yep. Yeah. As soon as you finish here, we, yeah, we're zooming to the, or calling the whale and going straight to the end. Yeah. You're also taking a different route than I do through here. I'll have to take a look at your route. I wonder if it's <laughs> faster because that's, that's the only thing I know for that. I mean, I know there's two ways to go. I... I can't say I ever timed either one. Yeah, I mean, either I didn't yeah. know there was a, like even a possibility of a, a different route. Yeah. Yet here we are. That that fire attack on Serena okay. was surprisingly weak. Yeah, she does have some fire resistance, including the her equipment. Awesome. KSAP landed first try. That's awesome. That frees up Serena to not have to do another sap. I'm gonna multi-heal for safety. Even though they're missed. Even though they're almost fully helped. Never trust this guy. Alright, that was that's the attack that can knock people down. It didn't knock anyone down. Alright. Thanks, Serena tanking these fire moves. Yeah. Nice. Great damage. See, Tatsunaga has 4,800 HP, I believe. So basically just if everything goes well, it's just three of those. Eric. He wasn't divided yet, so at least you don't. Ooh. Oh. Thankfully, we have two more damage dealers as a backup. Ooh, he should be an attack up plus four. The, <laughs> the Gwumple. Oh, well, don't, do don't do it. Oof. Okay. Oh, nice. Kind of rolling the dice there with Eric being low. Or not full health. Oh, I thought that went on Eric. And because Eric nice. is in the last spot, I think he... Very good fight. That was a good fight. Yeah. Because Eric is in the last spot, I think he only gets targeted 10% of the time. At least it should be. Given a big enough sample size. Yeah, now we're all done here. We're just going to warp to the Crucible, make our sword, and head to the final dungeon. The final dungeon has a little bit of a boss rush at the, at the end. You have to fight the last form of Jasper, and then the big bad guy twice in two different forms. The last, the last phase of the final bosses can be a little iffy. It requires lots of setup and stuff, but we'll describe it once we get there. It's very technical. Probably the most technical fight in the game. Oh, now that I think about it, we literally go back and forth like three different times. <laughs> This will be the final time now.
I never saw that it was called Mount Fuji before. <laughs> That's like a... Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, DQ. <laughs> get back on the windfish and head straight to the final dungeon now. So there will be a boss at the very beginning, Indignus, which we already got a glimpse of in Eric's scenario. Um, it can be a little iffy. We're going to be relying a lot on Blunt landing. It's really the only boss where we really have to use Blunt, because his physical attacks are just too strong. And we really need at least one of them to land, so that otherwise his attacks are just too powerful. And then we just make our way through here and do the final boss rush. Yeah, Blunt reduces uh, the enemy's attack power by 25%. Is that what it is? Yeah. We got both uh, Serena and Rav in the party to start for two chances at Blunt. First nice. one land zone. At this point, you can go for another one to make reduce the damage even more, but it's probably better just to yeah throw out a sap. Both nice. land. That was awesome. Wow. So perfect setup and start to this fight. People are alive. People are yeah. well. <laughs> you see how low their HP's got, and that like that would be so much worse. If yeah, Savando might have died. Yeah, from that, in front of that attack. Get one more divide and we win. Yeah. Savando would definitely be dead now. Yeah. Oh, Savando's oh, he dead is anyway. now. <laughs> Rip the hero. <laughs> oh, the one time where the, it didn't yeah, matter. The unnecessary one. <laughs> Nice fight. Oh, didn't even need the other fatal yeah. flash. Nice. Yeah, so we all we have to do is nick uh navigate through this whole uh final dungeon, which is it's it's a very interesting dungeon. Um there's just some puzzles to it and you're just trying to advance floor to floor. You go inside and out, it's very cool. And I know we said it a few times, but if you've never played it on 2D, it's kind of different on that. Like, oh, really? Yeah, I mean, it's the same concept, but it's like... Is it a different floor layout? A little bit. Interesting. Yeah. So it's it's definitely worth playing again. Um, Especially since the Definitive Edition, I didn't play casually. So uh, I got to try the new Draconian options. So yeah. I think they added two or three. I love that treasure chest just sitting right there. I forget what's it, but I almost think it's a mimic. I don't remember what's in that one. I remember, I know the one under the stairs is like a metal slime armor. Yeah.
I love those hula hooping demons. Exactly, that hula hoop sprite <laughs> is amazing. <laughs> like, they're all just dancing together. Like, it's perfect. That's just kind of an annoying move because it can stun people. That move. These are force fights I have to do in order to progress through the dungeon. I need, I need these mounts. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Good dodge. Chasing. I love how the enemies just stand there. <laughs> oh, hello. Then you so the all these floors of this little middle area is all connected top to bottom. So you can get on that mount and you can like ride your way to the bottom. And there's lots of chests and hidden items on the sides. The game expects you to pick up a mount to go over this, but yeah. it's easier to just take the damage and do a quick heal afterward. I always thought the the purple Blizzax were a very cool looking monster. Yeah. Yeah. kind of counterintuitive to progress. You have to not go to the top of that stairs, but drop off like halfway up. We're picking up the, the greatest mount again right here at the top of this. Yes. So those gold dragons are very dangerous. Just yes. putting that out there. <laughs> so in the next area, there's a, a dragon. We have to like press a couple. We have to go branching paths and press buttons to open up a path. And there's a dr big dr golden dragon st sitting in right in front of one of them. And you kind of have to be strategic in what going around him because he's a huge model. And uh, you don't want to fight him if you can help it. Getting past him the front side is relatively easy, but 
getting the back the other way is very difficult. Because you kind of have to, like, time his tail and go under it. We're also going to be picking up um, kind of like the ultimate sword, if you will, at this point. And we'll be putting it on Eric to increase his fatal flash damage. I don't know if you're going to do dual wielding. Yeah, I'm going to try to... Yeah, I'm going to apply dual wielding right after Jasper. Should okay. get enough skill points. Yeah. And that makes it so you when you dual wield, you only do your ability with one with your main handed weapon and your second one is just another attack on top of it so when you divide an attack it's essentially attacking six times three times with your ability and then three regular attacks but it adds on an, a few hundred damage every single time In this dungeon, there's actually a chance to encounter uh, King Metal Slimes. Um, you have those couple fights with the mounts, a chance for them to pop up. Um, it also has a chance if you accidentally fight the dragon. Oh yeah, that's true. If you somehow get lucky enough killing one, um, the way it'd be beneficial is that it would teach Serena Kazing. Right now, we don't have a guaranteed revive. Do you have any leaves? You should still have one leaf. I think I used. Did I use leaf in the Gildica fight? I don't know. Well, no, so you didn't use a leaf there. You've only used one that Eric had on him. Gotcha. And there were. You had the one from the tree and the one that I picked up before Arachnagon. So I should have one on here. Do you? I'm not sure. I think so. They both no, but I did use mine in, a, in the Aractagon fight. I think you don't have any more leaves. Hopefully uh, we don't have to use leaves. <laughs> we don't need leaves. Ooh. I thought you were going to clip his claw. <laughs> yeah, it kind of looked like it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So here we're kind of like waiting for the tail to move in the right position to go under it. And it's a very, very tight window. It's very difficult to get this timing right. Ugh. Nice. First oh, wow. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> Almost as good. <laughs> two for two. You do need to do a quick heal before the boss. Yep. So all these chests that are right by the boss doors are uh, generally Sage's Elixirs or Magic Waters. It's just that, like... They give you so many throughout this whole run that we don't need any more. And so it would just waste time to get them. Yeah, it's just a, it restores 80 MP. Yeah. All right, Jasper. All right, begins the final boss rush. This is the first of three boss fights here at the very, very end. Oh. Rav is hallucinating, but it literally doesn't matter. There you go, as, long, as long as it's not Eric. Echo just tops off Hendrick a little bit more. Oh, wave of ice. Okay. That's unfortunate. It removes the if you if Eric is divided, it also removes that. Basically, just delays the attack a turn. I forget that Hendrick has mid heal. Good turn order nice. there. Very good. Very good fight. 
Okay, we are nearing the end. I believe uh, now we have enough skill points on Eric so that Eric can learn uh, dual wield. So Eric's now Fatal Flash will do just a, that much more damage. So this next boss fight, the one reason you definitely don't want it to drag is uh, several turns in, he casts like a red mist, which like doubles all damage your party takes. And if you get it to that point in the in the fight, people are going to start dying. You better kill him quick. But usually it doesn't go that long. So this is the first form of the big bad guy, Mortagon. Similar strategy here, you're just dividing with Eric and Fatal Flash. And squeezing in Unbridled Blades or whatever where you can. And nice. Saps have, have been, sap. saps have been so good this run. He gives me freak swish here. Nice. Double swish. Cut above. Oh. <laughs> Cut above is not a drop your HP to one move. Serena just Serena. lived with one HP. <laughs> Oh, wow. nice crit. Dang, that was like 2,500 damage right wow. there. <laughs> One more? Aw. One move that he can do is he can summon a shadow, which has about 800 health. If he does that, you'll probably see Ellie use a gold rush, followed by an unbridled blade, which will kill the shadow. I'm gonna have to set up Hendrick here. I'm gonna have to take an extra turn. I'm gonna have to heal Serena. <laughs> that just draws MP. That's actually a good move to see because the fight will be over by the time we use our MP. Good thing we got that staff off. Nice. Another 1,500 damage. Whoa. We are in good shape. Yeah. So yeah, one more big attack will probably end this. He probably has at most a thousand health or so. Oh, got a butt. Wow. Got a butt. Uh, oh my oh, gosh. Wow. This is fine. <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Nice. So now we're on to the final, final boss fight. After this fight is the is time. So the way this fight works, you have the tail and the head of Mordragon. Um, conveniently spelled differently than the first fight. It, the game alternates between Mordagon and Mordragon multiple times. Um, either the tail and the head have a certain amount of health. Oh, wow. That's, that's that unfortunate. Again. Um, let's see what we can do here. Thankfully, you, you have a little bit of flexibility during this when they're isolated. So you fight the head by ins or fight the tail by itself, and then you fight the head, and then you fight them together. The goal is to do as much damage to the tail as possible before it moves on to the next phase. The next phase moves at 1,500 damage. So you want to get him like close to 1,500 damage and then end the fight with a big fatal flash to do get him close to like 3,000 damage done. And then once you enter the final phase, you... Um... I'm just sitting here worried about Silvando. There we go. Okay, we're good. And then in, and at the end of every single phase, they debuff you and get rid of all the buffs you had on you. And phase three can be tough. As soon, after about three or four turns, they pep together and do attack that damage, damages everybody about 100 damage every single time they take an action. So the goal after the during the phase two fight will be to 
get both Eric and Hendrik uh, buffed and prepared for the final phase. So you get them attack upped, and for Eric, you get them divided, and then take them out of the party. So that when they move to phase three, they keep their buffs, and then bring them back in, and you just go to town on the tail to finish them off before they pep together. So this, this is, is a, a very, very technical fight. This is a great setup. So he's basically over halfway there. Yeah, he is like... So yeah, Ellie got him very close to the threshold to push to phase two, and then unloaded a fatal flash to do another about 12 or 1300 damage. So he's in a very good situation. Goal here will be to end this phase with Hendrik and Eric out of the fight, but buffed. Oh, oh, that's unfortunate. I knocked out Um, I think he's just bringing Rab. <laughs> uh, let's hustle dance for safety. Keep everybody topped off. So Eric is already divided and and buffed, so he is staying out of this fight from here on out. I almost want to force the heal on him. Oh, so you need you want to get back up to full heal? Yep, and then I'll, I'll take, bring him back out. Ellie can take his time on this phase. There's no time-sensitive nature to this phase. The time-sensitive part comes in phase three, because they pep together and they get very strong. All right, there's the end of phase two. Okay. Ellie will be bringing in uh, Hendrik and Eric as soon as uh, the tail eats someone. Hopefully it's Jade. What is this turn order? All right, should eat him right now. I've never seen this. There we go. There we go. Hey, Rab, there that's go fine. There goes Rab. So here come in Hendrik and Eric that are already buffed. Oh, this one hits hard. Oh, wow, that was quick. The tail's almost dead. He might yeah. be dead after this. Nice. Dang, Absolutely. that was very, very well set yeah. up. So now that that tail's gone, he does not come back. It's just a matter of doing the damage to the head. Getting the tail down is the technical part. Here on out, it's just doing the damage. Time will be as soon as the head goes down and the final tune plays. Did you get another sap to land? Wow. wow. Oh, nice dodge. The saps have been absolutely amazing this run. Yeah. Nice. And time. Time. Nice. GG. Wow, that was a pretty guys, solid run overall. That was yeah, a good job, great Andy. run. Yeah. There were you guys had like no wipes to any bosses. We had we had a, I had one wipe in the arena. But that's it. Like that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, congratulations, you guys. Thank you, thank you. Overall about this run, yeah, nothing to complain about too much. We're all pretty solid. Aractagon could have gone south at any moment, but <laughs> there's been a number of good close calls in this in this run. Yeah, it's always good for everyone to see like how how things can go really bad and how you can recover from them. It's awesome. If I may, absolutely. 
we have a $10 donation from 10 Curbs who says, Here for Andy Perfect. Keep up the good work, RPG Limit Break. And indeed, Andy Perfect did deliver. I've also got some good news. We have found a workaround for our tracker issue. And in the process, I've discovered that not only have we reached $5,000, we have smashed it. We are currently sitting at $6,381. Oh, wow. Thank you very much to everyone watching who's turned in, tuned in, pardon me, and shown their support. Sounds good. Um, do you want to do any shout outs, uh, Andy? Uh, no, uh, just that Dragon Quest community has, has been awesome, super supportive. Um, I don't have any anyone particular shout out. Yeah, you, Ellie. So, go piggyback on Andy. We do have a DQ Discord. A lot of a uh, uh, lot of good resources if you want to get into Dragon Quest speedrunning. And Dragon Quest XI is a really good way to start. Uh, if you're looking to speedrunning a DQ game, this is definitely a good it's a good entry um, game to the series. Uh, big thanks to RPG Limit Break uh, for hosting the event in person again. We're really excited to be here doing this. And, uh, and a big thanks to Nami um, for being Nami, really. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you, indeed. And with that, my role to play here at the donate at the hosting chair has come to an end. We're gonna kick it off over to Moonblaze Wolf shortly during this intermission. And once we're back, we'll get you Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team Any Percent No Wonder Mail. Brought to you by Like a Noob.
right, everybody, welcome back to RPG Limit Break live from Salt Lake City, Utah. My name is Moonblaze Wolf, and I'm going to be your host for this next run of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team by Like a Noob. Uh, we have an interview coming up next, so while we're getting ready for that, let me tell you a little bit about our charity that we are raising money for this week. Uh, NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, is the nation's largest grassroots mental health organization. NAMI provides advocacy, education, support, and public awareness to improve the lives of all individuals and families affected by mental illness. NAMI exists to ensure that no one is alone on their mental health journey. I also just want to send a thank you to the people involved in our foreign language restreams. Our French restream can be found at twitch.tv slash lefrenchrestream and our Japanese restream at twitch.tv slash Japanese underscore restream. If those restreams can help you enjoy the marathon, go check them out and send them some love. All right, and I've just gotten word that we are ready for an interview with our next runner, like a noob, for Pokemon Mystery Dungeon with Kizaron. What's up, RPG Limit Break? I'm Kizaron. I'm joined by like a noob. Noob, hey, hey. how you doing, man? I'm doing fine. It's this. The energy here is so amazing. This is like my first ever like in-person speedrunning event. Ah, oh, darn! You took my first question already. <laughs> I was about to ask like, what other marathons so, so, have you done? So, uh, if this is your first, how excited slash nervous are you? I mean, of course, it comes both ways, right? I'm super excited to be on stage, but I'm also like, there's that little bit of nervous energy in the background. Um, so I was a, I, I'm sorry if I'm taking your questions, but I, I, no, was, a, I was a deferred run, um, which basically when we tried to do this in 2019, and the stuff happened, um, I got the chance to roll that run over. Um, so, you know, a lot changes in three years, um, not only from a speedering perspective, but from like how I spend my time perspective. Um, so it was like a, a lot of energy it took for me to get back into the swing of things, uh, back to a, a portion of um, the skill I thought I had back in 2019. But I feel good after, you know, that de-rust session. I know a lot of people like get that idea of, you know, the de-rusting you have to do for events like this. So, yeah, I'm excited. Now, you did mention that there has been a little bit of a gap since you last submitted this. Um, has there been any route changes? Like, has any, What has changed, if anything, between, you know, 2020 submission and now? There's actually been a decent amount of um, little optimizations, I would call it. Um, so the biggest you know, time saves you would get from a run like this is that um, the, there's these things called quick saves, which is basically what guides the manipulation in this game. And each quick save is roughly 25 to 30 seconds. Okay. So if you can cut out a quick save, that, that's a free 30 seconds of time save. So throughout the years, throughout the two years, um, a runner called a secure account kind of went through and figured out how to minimize the quick saves needed. Um, and that was kind of the big changes from here and now. Now, if people at home haven't watched like Mystery Dungeon in general, but specifically this game as well, how does a speed run of this actually work? I know that it's manipulated, yeah. but uh, like how, how does the manipulation work? Um, how friendly is it for someone at home to pick up and play? Yeah, totally. So the really, really cool thing about this run in specific is in this game in specific is that the, the manipulation can be done literally by anybody all it all it um you have to do for it is go into the menu option inside of the dungeon itself and hit quick save and then in, when you load the game back in the manipulation has already been set so basically um what that has allowed us to do is do a lot of cool guides for communities even outside of the speedrunning community to be like you know this is how you can recruit this really hard pokemon or this is how you can get through this dungeon that you might not be able to get through um, before. Um, so yeah, literally anybody can do this manipulation, which is what I think is so cool about it. It's very accessible in that way. Now, what is probably the scariest part of the run, in your opinion? Um, so um, while I say that these quick saves are accessible, um, when you get that, you know, I, we call it the seed, when you get that seed set from the manipulation, um, it's, it's there. And it's very finicky. There's like some weird stuff, and I'll talk about it in my run, but there's some very weird stuff that can occur based on even like 
where, like, what items you have where in your inventory and stuff like that. Um, so while it's very easy to do, it's also very hard to get exactly how you want it to be. Um, so there's a couple of dungeons where we specifically need to get items off the ground, which, like, you know, has very few, um, you know, room for error. Now, do you have a favorite part of the run? So, so there is this um, cutscene when you go up uh, a dungeon called Great Canyon and you go visit this um, all-being Pokemon named Zatu. You have two <laughs> options when you go and try to talk to him. You try to talk to him and he's very standoffish. He's not uh, interacting with you. And you can rather tickle him or attack him. <laughs> and and the, uh, the, fun, my fun, the funniest part about the run for me is that you can choose to not be that optimal and choose to tickle him. <laughs> and it has some very cool cutscenes, um, very funny cutscenes that go along with that. Now, be sure to stick around, folks, because this sounds like it's going to be a great run. Um, we do want to mention a couple of prizes real quick. So during Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, if you donate a minimum of $10, you qualify for a Rescue Team DX Switch. Um, unfortunately, I do not have that with me right now. Um, on that, t Oh, I do. You Hello. Do. Look at that. Look at that. You can get this for Switch. I, there's no zoom in, but tr trust me, it's, it's there. I promise. I promise. Um, for $15 minimum, you can not only qualify for that, but you can also qualify for a PMD art print. Uh, that one I'm pretty sure I don't have near me, but uh, uh, <laughs> pretend it's right here. Um, it's, it's beautiful. I, I promise. I promise. Mm -hmm. But for $20, you can also qualify for, I'm pretty sure it's in okay. There you go. Yeah. The big collection of Evolution plushes. They are fantastic. That's only $20. That is a steal, folks. But remember, Get those donations in during Noob's run of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. You're going to kill it, man. I'm excited for you. Thank you and man. we're going to send it back up to the front. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Subconscious. <laughs> and then <laughs> just leave them at the head. The entire run. All right, well, we're going to take a few minutes here. Uh, like Anub has got to get set up for that run that you were just hearing about, and also those prizes, new prizes starting with this run as well that you can, you can get if you donate. So I've got some donations here. I want to run through them. You all have been sending in um, so much love uh, for the event and uh, for the NAMI uh, organization. We have $26 from Rainbow Otter. We have $56 from Jason LaRose. We have $50 from Cult. We also have $25 from Feeling Krabby, who says, thank you for a great DQ11 run. We have $15 from Mechalink with no comment. And we have a $50 anonymous donation with no comment. Thank you so much for all of those donations. And speaking of incentives, while we are getting set up for this next run, I need to tell you about some of those incentives because a couple of them are going to be closing really soon. And we've also got a couple bonus incentives for this next run that we really, really need to meet, everybody. So let's keep those donations coming in. I know the Pokemon community has a lot of great uh, donation uh, styles and uh, things that you like to send in. I want to read them all for you. I want to read them all, even. So let's get those in. Let's support NAMI. Uh, just to give everybody an update on the two bid wars that are going to open, or they're going to close, excuse me, right at the start of the run, we've got the very first two of four naming incentives. Those are both looking pretty spicy right now. So we've got the name Meowth incentive. Uh, we've got three really great options that are kind of at the top of the heap right now. We've got Rin in the lead with $289. And a little bit behind, we've got Melanie Peepo at $203.
And we've also got Cruel at $100. So if you want to name Meowth, and I know you do, that's right. Uh, let's get those donations in for that incentive. And then we've got a super, super tight uh, race for the name Squirtle incentive. Keys are off. Never heard of him. Might be, uh, might be uh, related to our, our recent interviewer, though. I don't know. Uh, at $25 is currently leading that one for name Squirtle. And then uh, at $21, just a little bit behind is, uh, I like this one, Shirtle. We've also got a name Magnemite incentive. Neg Nami is leading that one at $50. And we've got a name Absol incentive. Uh, that one is also looking pretty close. We've got Badoof in the lead at $26. Omen in second at $25. Palmer at $22. And Sirius at $20. There's a few more, but honestly, at that amount, anybody can snag that one at this point. So make sure you get those donations in for all of those great Pokemon names. And then we have two bonus post-run incentives that we really need to meet as well, y'all. Uh, we have got Re Recruit Kecleon. That is at $70 out of $500, so we need another $430 for that. Uh, and we have an exhibition of a bonus dungeon, the Purity Forest. It's one of the hardest dungeons in the game. We need another $810 for that. It's currently at $190 out of $1,000. So all these great Pokemon incentives that you can donate for. Get those donations in. I want to read them. I'm so excited to be here. This is my first RPG limit break, and I'm having a great time so far. So let's keep it going. And again, just to give you a little bit more information about the organization that we are here supporting all this week here uh, from Salt Lake City, Utah. RPG Limit Break 2022 proudly supports the National Alliance on Mental Illness, AKA NAMI. To get involved in the fight against mental illness and the stigmas it can bring, reach out to NAMI via their state organizations or on Facebook where they can be found as NAMI, on Instagram and Twitter as at NAMI Communicate, it's not a weakness to need help. Please reach out if you think you need help. 